on shows hey, and they would, you know they yeah. didn't wait the next week <laughs> you're all what's going to happen to the six million dollar man he was hanging with his one bionic arm morning rush weekdays 5 to 7 a.m only on 11 alive Atlanta. Almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Live's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man. It's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home. From different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once an Olympic city, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. newscast not enough for you get even more at 11 alive's youtube channel where you'll find uncut interviews extended body cam footage live streams of 11 alive news primetime on the atl starts now Georgia's first death from COVID-19, a sad development in a day filled with new information, changing the way many of us will go about our daily lives. And we have a number of school districts, colleges, and universities canceling classes. You can see a list running at the bottom of our screen right here, right now. So here's what we know. The governor says we now have 31 cases in 12 counties, including some that still need final confirmation by the CDC. His message, the state anticipates more cases and we all need to be prepared. The governor also offered prayers for the family of Georgia's first coronavirus death. The 67 year old man was hospitalized at Wellstar Keniston in Cobb County. He tested positive for coronavirus March 7th. In addition to the Department of Public Health, this the department says that the man had underlying medical conditions. The governor also issued a call to action tonight. We all need to take steps to protect ourselves against the virus, but we must especially remember to help those at risk the most, the elderly and those with chronic conditions. We have team coverage tonight and we are bringing you the very latest on local closures and the impacts of coronavirus. We're also trying to take away some of the fear over social distancing. We begin at the state capitol where the governor urged people not to panic. But there was a definite change in the tone of his message. Joe Hinke had a chance to speak with him today. The governor and the Department of Public Health in that press conference late this afternoon announced that they will be releasing more information moving forward about confirmed COVID-19 cases. Oh Yesterday, we first reported that the state had been directing us to the state's website for the most up-to-date numbers, but after uh, we asked questions about the cases, those numbers around 2 p.m. yesterday disappeared. We also had been hearing this week from 11 Alive viewers who contacted our newsroom expressing concerns about hospitals and county health boards announcing positive cases but not seeing those numbers reflected in the state's official total. Now live on the state health department's website, there is data breaking down confirmed cases by county, age groups, and sex. We can tell you there is only one child confirmed with COVID-19 in Georgia. The majority of cases, people 18 to 59, with nearly 40% over the age of 60. More men have also tested positive currently in Georgia than women. There is a delay with those numbers. Though I'm told those numbers on the state's website will be updated around midnight every day. So. Those numbers that we are showing right now are from as of midnight um, or first thing this morning. The commissioner for the Department of Public Health also asked today about that first death in Georgia. She said she expects many, many more COVID-19 cases in Georgia, many of those to be serious, but she did add some important context. Also to remember that the majority of the time, 80% of the time, this is a very mild disease. And we are right now testing the most severely ill people. 
And so our, the rate of, of a poorer outcome among the currently known cases is going to be much higher than if we actually had a screening program to screen every Georgian. And in his press conference, Governor Brian Kemp did not mandate any school closures or local governments to close, but he did ask local governments if they have staff that can telework or stay home, that they that he would like them to take that move as far as schools and daycares. Uh, he did not ask any of them to close, but if they can shut down for two weeks as early as tomorrow, he said he would like to see school districts and daycares take that move. Dr. Toomey also with the Department of health saying, hey, the numbers are a little skewed at this point because there hasn't been widespread testing. It is obviously very concerning to hear about the first death from the virus, and we are hearing from the state we're going to get more cases. Information is power right now it because it helps us be prepared and make good decisions, and you've got a tool, Rebecca, that can help us keep track of a lot of that information. That's always changing. It is always changing, at least in a big picture perspective, because a lot of people really trying to decide, do I take that vacation? Mm -hmm. Should I go to that gathering that that is happening in my neighborhood right. so there are a lot of tracking maps right now and I really like this one that you see behind me it's from John Hopkins University and the reason I really in, like this one is that it does it gives you that number of total cases that we're seeing keep in mind this is across the globe and you look at that number 127,000 cases that's a big number it is a scary number but why I like this map is because of what they do over here on the other side of the screen they tell you the number of deaths around the world but they also tell you the number of people who have recovered and you can scroll through this list to actually find out where those who have recovered are living and if you do the math if you add or subtract the total confirmed from the number of people recovered you're actually going to find that there are more people who have had COVID-19 who have finished their quarantine process who have now recovered or back out in the community trying to move on with their lives than there are people who are still at home trying to get over this illness. And within the last few hours, an announcement affecting more than 330,000 college students in the state. The university, the university system of Georgia announcing it is suspending in-person classes for now, with many private colleges also deciding to move to an online class model. 11 Alive's Latasha Givens has more on these decisions. Emory sophomore Grant Britton is glad the university was one of the first in our state to move to online learning as the confirmed coronavirus cases continue to rise. I feel like the situation is under control here in the U.S., but given that it could easily be very contagious, then I think that it would probably be the best option to do what they're doing with shutting down all the schools. When the dorms close, he'll have to go back home to Nashville, along with his brother, a student at Vanderbilt, whose campus is also closing. He says reimbursement for room and board will come soon. We haven't been given specific monetary values of how much they'll return us for our room and board, but they said that there will be at least some reimbursement. We decided to move to an, a fully online platform and ask our students to stay at home and uh, operate online. Oglethorpe, SCAD, Clark Atlanta University, Spelman, and Morehouse Colleges are all moving to digital learning. All on-campus, campus-sponsored activities are canceled for the duration of the semester. Every college we spoke with says arrangements will be made for students who can't move back home. Late Thursday afternoon, the University System of Georgia, which includes GSU, UGA, and Georgia Tech, decided to follow suit. The WHO declares the uh, pandemic. Tony Tan was initially upset that Tech did not move to online learning sooner, but feels safer knowing the university is following the recommended proximity guidelines as outlined by the CDC. In a lot of my classes, students sit right next to each other, right? CDC says the, the definition of close contact for getting the disease is about six feet. I don't have six feet between me and my, my classmates. President Trump's decision to place a travel restriction on 26 European countries sparked criticism internationally. The restrictions, which go into effect on Friday, only apply to foreign nationals. It does not include U.S. citizens or their family members. It does not include the U.K., and it is only for people not good. Some Americans rushed to European airports thinking initially they needed to return home before the deadline tomorrow. One passenger says... The uncertainty was unsettling. I think a lot of people panicked last night when it wasn't clear that like American citizens could still return home. So I know a lot of people that were freaked out and trying to change their flights like yesterday. There's definitely been like a lot of uncertainty, which has caused a lot of like panic. The restrictions will now last for the next 30 days.
Georgia lawmakers are adapting their schedule to the outbreak of the coronavirus. They're suspending the legislative session starting next week, but plan to return at an unspecified time. 11 Live's Doug Richards spoke to lawmakers at the state capitol about shortening the legislative session. These are hard decisions to have to make. House Speaker David Ralston would only say that the legislative calendar is in flux. The Capitol becomes one of the most crowded buildings in downtown during the 40-day legislative session. And many lawmakers would like to make an expeditious exit. COVID-19 is, is a pandemic. Bob Trammell is the House Minority Leader. You know, this is a public health issue. Uh, the CDC guidance is, is generally to avoid large gatherings. Obviously, the Capitol is a large gathering of people from all over Georgia. Today, the House sent to the governor a budget resolution, the only law the legislature is legally required to pass. Lawmakers don't have much stomach to delay the conclusion of the session, fueling speculation for an early exit. I think the best thing to do at this point in time is to err on the side of caution. Eric. Today was crossover day, one of the most important days on the legislative calendar when many bills die if they aren't passed by either the House or the Senate. One bill that passed both chambers today tightened the rules on ethylene oxide, the gas used at medical sterilization companies like Sterogenics in Cobb County and BD in Covington. Other bills that passed, including uh, a bill regulating coal ash ponds and a bill that would criminalize college hazing. I'm Ellen Lopez. As we continue to take precautionary measures against COVID-19, many of you have questions, and we brought in 11 Alive medical correspondent Dr. Sujatha ready to talk to us about some of them. Some places like nursing homes and healthcare facilities are screening those coming in for any coronavirus symptoms, yet you can still have the virus and show zero symptoms for days. Recent data has told us that symptoms typically appear at about five days, mm -hmm. but before that, you may not have a fever, you may not have the, right. a cough, but you have the virus and you may be able to spread it. Travel from Europe to the U.S. will be restricted, although this doesn't apply to U.S. citizens or permanent residents, meaning you can still travel, but how could that impact your return? So you may be able to leave okay. When you come back, you may be possibly held at the airport or not allowed to come back. I, I, the realm, ramifications are innumerable. I don't know how to, we don't know what's gonna happen. Those affected the most by the virus outside of the elderly are people who already have underlying medical conditions. But what does that mean? So when we use the term underlying medical condition, we're talking about something where someone goes to a doctor and has medication on a standing basis for that condition. So what we're talking about would be something like you mentioned, asthma. Other ones, what we've been told with this one are important are heart disease and um, high blood pressure. Um, if you happen to have any sort of lung disease, that can be an issue because this seems to be a respiratory um, uh, virus. Doctors keep warning us to take precautions to make sure that people stay safe during the pandemic. But following those precautions, like canceling major events, can make people even more nervous. Caitlin Ross explains why this type of social distancing is now necessary. There's a trending hashtag on Twitter right now, cancel everything. And that's kind of how it feels. Every few minutes we hear of another big event, conference, concert, charity gala, all being canceled. It feels like a really big deal. It's scary and unfamiliar, but people who study this actually say it's the right call. The idea is to flatten the curve, stop the spread of the coronavirus before it overwhelms the healthcare system. This graphic from the CDC illustrates how this would work well. If we did nothing right now, carried on exactly as normal, we would end up here in this dark red part. The healthcare system would be overrun, above max capacity, and unable to care for people who are really sick. By slowing down the spread of the virus, we stay here in the blue, where people still get sick, but it's at a level where the doctors and hospitals can still manage it and treat people who need it. You slow it down by washing your hands, not touching your face, and practicing social distancing. Monday was the first time I heard that term. So what does it mean? We're used to coming into really close contact with people at those public events that everyone's canceling right now, but also in our everyday lives, like meetings where we sit right next to each other. The idea is not to do that. Practicing social distancing means staying about six feet away from other people, and that can be hard and uncomfortable. But if we want to stay out of this red zone, it's necessary until COVID-19 is under control. 
And we have the latest coronavirus updates in one place for you to make them easy to find, easy to understand. You can look for the articles in the coronavirus section of the 11 Alive app. The coronavirus impacting big business. The stock market performed poorly again. We'll tell you about that coming up. And don't forget, we are streaming right now on the 11 Alive YouTube channel. You can subscribe and get in on the conversation in the community section. There's more 11 Alive news in primetime next. Have it with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Some mornings, what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Crog Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pretty eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel as good vibe. We vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're gonna get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking. The dining facility at Moody Air Force Base near Valdosta temporarily closed after an employee at the base tested positive for COVID-19. The base declared a public health emergency. It increased its health protection condi condition to level B, which allowed them to roll out procedures to deal with the threat. That includes continuing strict hygiene, no handshaking, and sanitizing common use items. It's important to remember COVID-19 impacts people in different ways. The group most at risk, older adults, also people who have already had serious chronic medical conditions are at risk. These include heart disease, diabetes, and asthma as well. The stock market had its biggest drop since the Black Monday crash of 1987. The Dow fell more than 2,300 points. The steep drops in the last month have wiped out most of the big gains on Wall Street during the Trump administration. Various businesses are doing what they can to limit the panic and still help people. Target, Walmart, Kroger and Publix are all limiting purchase of certain items like hand sanitizer, soap and disinfectant to make sure there's enough to go around for everyone. CVS is delivering prescriptions for free so people at higher risk for the virus can stay home. You can find more ways that businesses are helping on 11alive.com. There's some other stories that we are following in our speed feed tonight. Police have made an arrest in the murder of a convenience store owner. DeKalb County Police say they have arrested 42-year-old Ronnie Miller this morning. They say he is one of the three suspects wanted for the murder of 57-year-old Tasfe Beru, who was shot and killed last month while locking up the TikTok store on Evans Mill Road. Two others still wanted, police say. Tips they received after the family held a news conference last week helped them identify Miller. Two of four people accused in the death of 21-year-old Hannah Bender were in court today. 19-year-old Dylan Reed and 18-year-old Isaac Huff pleaded not guilty to their arraignment today. They, along with 24-year-old Austin Stryker, are accused of killing Bender. Stryker and 78-year-old Jerry Harper waived their appearances. Harper's accused of helping cover up the murder. The Coweta County Sheriff's Office has a warning about a kidnapping scam. They say some citizens have reported getting a call that their child is being held in the back of a van and they have to pay to get he or she back. Victims can hear a child screaming for help in the background. They say the best thing to do Hang up the phone, but if you do engage the caller, don't say your name, your loved one's name, 
and asked to speak to whoever is making that call. And uh, we'll see, uh, you know, what other information that they are able to ascertain and they are able to give to you. They say also, contact your child, ask them to call you from their cell phone to make sure that they are okay. Here's what. We're keeping our eye on an active weather pattern that is out to the north and west of us, and that's where they're dealing with some showers and storms and even severe weather uh, tonight. And you can see this color right here, that kind of tan color is indicating the enhanced risk or the level three of five risk through parts of Kentucky, northern Tennessee, back into Arkansas, and that's where we're seeing those stronger storms right now. And I know you're watching this system wondering if this is going to impact us. Well, it looks like the main energy with that is going to stay to the north of us. And we are just in this light green color, which is just indicating general showers, maybe a few thunderstorms overnight, really toward tomorrow morning with that. And then it's far north Georgia is just a sliver of that is in the marginal risk or level one of five risk, meaning there's just a chance for a couple of isolated stronger storms that could happen there. And then on Friday, uh, even though we're going to still see a few showers around, we're not concerned about severe weather here. That severe weather threat is mainly going to be well out to the west. So we will have some showers around, but nothing really looking too severe or strong uh, over the next couple of days. In fact, for the evening hours, it looks like it's going to remain on the uh, mild side and staying dry out there. Temperatures in the 60s for much of the evening. Once the sun goes down, we'll drop down into those 60s. And then, as you can see here, a 20% chance for showers going up to about a 30% chance early in the morning with those scattered showers that'll be in our area. Not raining all day, though. I think the better chances will be early. It's going to be mild to start. 61 for a high, uh, for a low. 71 for the high with some scattered showers that'll be around. A lot of those will be diminishing later in the day. In fact, here's the timing. Tonight, we're looking fine. And then as as we go through the day on Friday, a few showers more likely from Atlanta northward early in the morning that pushes to the south and east and a lot of that falls apart as it moves down to the south and east by Friday uh, in the uh, lunchtime hour. Things are starting to diminish and I really think most of us will be dry in the afternoon on Friday except for a few spotty showers here on the south side and then going into Saturday that looks like the best day of the weekend. Still not perfect. We're going to have clouds around but only about a 20% chance for a shower and even some breaks in those clouds to give us some sunshine at times, uh, but not oh, you know, a perfect day, just that low rain chance. And then as we head into Sunday, that's when we see those rain chances coming back, especially in North Georgia, some of those pushing down toward Metro Atlanta uh, during the afternoon hour. So over the next few days, we still have some rain chances, but it's kind of ups and downs with those percentages. A 40% chance Friday, highs near 71, 20% chance on Saturday with a high of 69, 68 Sunday with the rain chance back up to 60%, a little lower on Monday, also a little cooler on Monday with highs near 59. And then Tuesday, back to a 60% chance, only 30% chance on Wednesday, 40% chance on Thursday. So what I want you to know in looking at this and seeing all the raindrops around, it's not going to be a torrential downpour every day, all day. We're just talking about the scattered showers that will be kind of up and down with those percentages through next week. All right, folks, you know what time it is. You see your screen. It is time for Thursday's edition of the A-Scene, and we are kicking off with a recap of Film Day at the Capitol that went down yesterday. So we actually got a chance to speak firsthand from officials about how the coronavirus is affecting production here. And on top of celebrating Georgia Film Day at the Capitol, multiple leaders and professionals toted the economic benefit the TV and film industry have had on the state. And we also asked officials about the state's plan if the coronavirus interrupts Georgia productions. So far, an upcoming reality television competition series was impacted when scheduled filming during South by Southwest was canceled. And the Atlanta-based production for the upcoming Disney Plus series, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier was canceled as well due to the government in Prague closing schools and other institutions. Now, AC producer Ryan Dennis spoke with Burt Brantley, who is the CEO of the Georgia Department of Economic Development, and asked him about precautions being taken. And Governor Kemp took a very proactive approach on really informing Georgians about what's happening and how the state is responding. Uh, and our, the film industry is no different than any other industry. They pay attention to those. Right now, it's business as usual. If you've ever been on a film set, they are very conscious about safety and health of all their workers. Uh, and so this is really something where we feel like they can continue to work. Uh, there's are usually closed set, so there's not big gatherings of people. And so this is an industry that can thrive. 
Yeah, and in the event that a TV and film production backs out amidst coronavirus concerns, companies will still be able to receive that Georgia tax credit incentive if their production has contributed more than $500,000 to the state. Who's ready to find the love of your life? <laughs> Let's go! Come on! Okay, so how would you like to be one of the 16 singles invited to a beautiful island where experts have single-handedly chosen you based on what they feel your chemistry will be with another possible suitor? Well, that's exactly what happens in the Lifetime show Married at First Sight, where couples have their honeymoon before their wedding. And guess what? The next season will be filming right here in Atlanta. You just need to be single, of course, not married. You need to live here in the city and be ready to take that leap of faith. Now, if you'd like to submit, the link is right there, smack dab on your screen. All I can say is good luck and tell them Francesca sent you. No, ugly. <gasps> A heartbreaking, a heartbreaking moment shared online, her mother's touching response, plus how thousands are showing their support as well. Show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever-changing, always interesting. The Crog Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel is good vibe. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're gonna get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. It they does. are fun. <laughs> and they're, they're convenient. Fun. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a yeah. new way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. At one point today, I just caught myself taking a deep breath. You know, there's so much going on and people are on edge and we need a story like this one. We can all use a little reassuring, just like this beautiful little girl who went to go get her hair done and got a whole lot more. NBC's Blaine Alexander has her story. When four-year-old Ariana Cotton sat down to get her hair done, she whispered three heartbreaking words. I'm so ugly. <gasps> I'm so ugly. Family friend Shabria Redmond that. pulled her close you and told her say, she was so wrong. Pretty. You are so pretty. Do you hear me? You are too cute. Oh, no. Oh, you gonna make me cry. You're not ugly. Let me see. Let me see. You got two dimples. When Shabria posted the moment online, the world agreed. Film director Matthew Cherry started the hashtag artwork for Ariana, flooded with gorgeous images of her. Ariana, you are black and beautiful. Big names chiming in, including Michelle Obama. In a world that sometimes tries to say otherwise, I want to tell you and every other beautiful, intelligent, brave black girl just how precious you are. For Ariana, a new hairdo and new confidence to go with it. Thank you. 
As the coronavirus spreads, it's important to maintain your overall health. Up next, our medical correspondent, Dr. Sujatha Reddy, has tips on how you can boost your immune system. And one way to avoid the spread of germs, don't touch your face. It's hard not to touch your face. We'll give you a, a little primer on it coming up next. From Atlanta, all help shape the future of America. Once in Olympic City, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from 5 to 7 on The Morning Rush on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go to waste. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, auntie. No. <laughs> auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boil Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you to do what I say. I'm no, 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 You kill a super. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish... Here is the very latest on the coronavirus in Georgia. Governor Kemp confirms the state's first death from the coronavirus. A 67-year-old man who was at Wellstar Kennestone in Cobb County. He also asked educational and community leaders to consider closing daycares, schools, and school districts as soon as tomorrow through the next two weeks. And four major sports leagues have suspended their seasons for now. The NASCAR races at Atlanta Motor Speedway are on, but no fans will be inside. And March Madness, including the men's Final Four in Atlanta, is canceled. Carnival Cruise Lines now suspending operation of its Princess Cruises because of the coronavirus outbreak. The 60-day suspension began today. It will continue through May 10th. This move impacts the cruise line's fleet of 18 ships. The president of Princess Cruises said the company is committed to the well-being of its passengers. Princess Cruises has been hit particularly hard by the pandemic. Just after midnight, another round of Grand Princess passengers arrived at Dobbins Air Reserve Base in Marietta. The group will be tested and quarantined for 14 days, similar to the 250 passengers who arrived on Wednesday morning. Both groups were possibly exposed to the coronavirus on the Grand Princess cruise ship. The ship is now docked in Oakland, California, after nearly two dozen passengers tested positive for the virus. 
This year's annual hunger walk has officially been canceled out of an abundance of caution. It was scheduled for Sunday and this would have been the 36th consecutive year Atlanta hosted the event. Coronavirus is impacting daily lives in many ways. People over 60 with chronic medical conditions are most at risk. And now with the virus spreading more, we're hearing more numbers in Georgia and throughout the world. It's paramount we take the measures we each can to stay healthy. Joining us is 11 Alive medical correspondent, Dr. Sujatha Reddy. Our immune systems are such a key. People who have low immune systems are more at risk. Is there anything each person could do to try to boost our immune systems to help protect us in ways that we can. Yeah, I think that's a really important topic to discuss. One thing with your immune system, though, is these are not things that are going to work overnight. But, you know, this may last for a few weeks and hopefully not more than that, but it's quite possible it's going to last for a month or so. And in that case, I think it's not too late to try to help your immune system. So the things that we recommend are the things all of us should be doing all the time anyway. These are common New Year's resolutions. Mm -hmm. So some specific things pe people can do to help their immune system. You're going to want to eat plenty of fruits and vegetables, like a healthy diet. Get enough sleep. That's probably one of the most important things we can all do. You know, at least seven hours as an adult, maybe even more. You want to keep active, be exercise, be physically fit, have some energy endurance. That's going to help you. If you're a smoker, absolutely quit smoking because that has all the negatives and absolutely nothing positive. Mm -hmm. Limit your alcohol. Make sure you're also controlling other conditions. If you have high blood pressure, you have diabetes, keep those in check. That's very important because all that does affect your overall health. And then we've heard it before, but I'm gonna say it again, preventing the infection is gonna be key, slowing it down as we've heard. So wash hands, mm -hmm. keep a distance. If you're sick, stay home and try to avoid touching eyes, nose, and mouth, and all those things should help us through this crisis. You know, really preparation is a way that it can it can set, settle us if we know we are prepared in some ways. And there are specific guidelines about what we can do to be ready if it does come to our doorstep, if our loved ones or we get sick. Yeah, you're exactly right. And I think that will f make us feel somewhat empowered because to some degree, I think a lot of us are feeling like a little bit helpless. It's out of it's control, just, yeah. It is. It's just happening around us. So you're right, being prepared. What do we mean by that? We've been told by the authorities, be ready in case you can't leave your house, you're quarantined or stores shut down. Be prepared in your home for two to four weeks. The most important advice there, I think, is make sure you have a minimum 30, maybe even 90 day supply of prescription medication. That's going to be key. Mm. Beyond that, you also want to make sure you have medications at home for the common over the counter complaints that a lot of sure. us sometimes get. Things like headaches, so if you get you know, Tylenol or Advil, mm -hmm. you know, cough medicine, if you have bowel issues, diarrhea medicine, those kind of things, keep those okay. on hand because you may not be able to run out and get them. You also want to make sure you have, if you have high blood pressure, a blood pressure cuff so you can monitor at home. You may not be able to go to the fire station and get your blood pressure mm -hmm. checked. If you have diabetes, a glucose monitor, things like that. Think, think a little bit ahead about what you might need and you may not be able to run out. And I think that'll keep people empowered and safe if they're in their homes. All right. Important to reiterate, 80% of people have mild symptoms, but we must be prepared. Absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Reddy. Appreciate it. We want to remind you the CDC recommends cleaning frequently touched surfaces like tables, doorknobs, light switches. Use household cleaners and EPA registered disinfectants to clean those surfaces. And if you don't have those, here's another option for you. You can use diluted household bleach or alcohol solutions with at least 70% alcohol. Remember to wear gloves and use eye protection when using chemicals inside your home. And also, if you're cleaning inside, you might want to consider opening the windows and doors to allow fresh air to come in. And after you're finished, be sure chemicals are stored out of reach of children. We have put all the latest coronavirus updates in one place for you to make them easy to find and see and understand. You can look for all of those articles in the coronavirus section of the 11 Alive app. In Iraq, three service members were killed, including two Americans in a rocket attack on a military base. That tops our speed feed. One of the officials said five service members were seriously wounded and evacuated from the Camp Kaji base. That's on Wednesday. Seven others still being evaluated right now. The U.S. military said those names of the killed would be released after notifying the families. A U.S. military spokesman said about 18 rockets struck the base and a rocket rigged truck was found a few miles away. The U.S. has not confirmed who is behind the attack. A big movie premiere in Atlanta now canceled. The screening for A Quiet Place 2 was scheduled for Monday at Regal Hollywood in Chambly, but concerns over the coronavirus have led executives at Paramount Studios to cancel it. 
The studio released a statement saying it hopes to bring the film to audiences this year once they better understand the impact of the pandemic. Governor's Office of Highway Safety says they're teaming up with four other state agencies to keep the roads safe for St. Patrick's Day. They say that local police agencies and state troopers will be out in full force cracking down on drunk driving. They encourage revelers to plan ahead and to get a designated driver or use a ride-sharing app. 25% of all traffic deaths in 2018 were due to alcohol-related crashes. A Georgia animal rescue is at the center of a multi-state investigation that triggered the surrender of 70 animals. And investigators now want to know where money donated to care for those dogs went. Reveal investigator Rebecca Lindstrom traveled to Florida to confront those involved. A brown terrier mix was certainly in need of rescue after being hit by a car in South Georgia. He had bilateral femur fractures, a fractured pelvis, a ruptured bladder. The animal rescue Dragon Paws rushed to his aid, asking for donations to pay for his care. The dog, later named Highway, was a social media hit. On the mend, Highway went to a medical foster in Florida to finish his recovery. But instead of a clean home with specialized care, this is what Leah Moore found when she walked on property with sheriff's deputies. There were 50 some odd dogs in cages stacked upon one another in their own urine and feces in every room of that house. The same house where they slept, in fact. The Union County Sheriff in Florida called Guardians of Rescue to seize the dogs on this property in early February amid concerns of animal cruelty and neglect. Moore says vet records show Highway's bladder was fixed. But six months later, there is no evidence Dragon Paws ever treated his leg. Literal dead weight. It looks like Highway started to chew it off. And he wasn't the only dog with special needs left in the care of Sandra Abels. We don't want to talk to anybody about anything going on. The reveal traveled to Florida to ask Sandra Abels and her husband about the dogs. Have, have you been taking care of the dogs? Can we ask you to please leave. All right. What was their justification for not getting them help? They were just the fosters and not the people who manage the finances that allow for them to go get veterinarian care and have it paid for. Dragon Paws. It is a nonprofit with a presence in three states, Virginia, Georgia, and Florida. Terry Nicole is listed as president, but the Georgia license is held by his wife, Denise. The sheriff's office questioned Denise Nicole for more than two hours about what she knew and why she kept giving the Abels more dogs. We had the same questions. You just know there was a lot of money raised, a lot of questions about I am where working that money with law went. enforcement for the animals. Highways vet bills alone could run about $2,000. That injured leg, now gone. Based off what you have seen, do you feel like a crime was committed? Are there criminal charges here? There's no doubt in my mind, no doubt at all. A Senate bill passed this week would require rescues and breeders in Georgia to have insurance to cover the costs of a seizure like this one. It would also bar anyone convicted of animal cruelty from getting a license to reopen. Still to come, the best ways to talk to your kids about the coronavirus outbreak. Hold in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, Good guys didn't oh, finish. Oh, oh. Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water because I'm, I'm sugary. Uh, uh, yeah. okay, right, right. About that. Well, reward would be slimming, slimming down. Okay, yes. yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, a little water yes. in my cup. And, and beautiful skin. <laughs> well, you know, even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. It's not going to be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Some mornings what you want 
isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. <laughs> News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever-changing, always interesting. The Crown Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel is good vibes. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're going to get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. Several schools now making the decision to close after Governor Kemp encouraged the move in a news conference earlier today. Fulton County Schools, Atlanta Public Schools, and Cobb County Schools, just the very latest to make the call. Meanwhile, the university system of the University of Georgia has announced classes will be suspended for two weeks at all of its colleges and universities around the state. We want to remind you that we have a list of all of these closures on our website, 11alive.com. We also have a running list at the bottom of your screen, as you can see. We're working around the clock to try to keep you updated on all of these coronavirus-related closures. Well, with schools closing and communities canceling events, parents might be wondering, how to explain what's going on to your children? I spoke with a professional counselor for advice on having that conversation. He says the number one rule is to listen to your child first. Every child is different and age plays a role in all of this. So hearing what they have to say will help you assess where they are. You might start by asking, what have you heard about this? That gives you a chance to address any misinformation or calm any fears they might have. Uh, Dr. Eddie Reese, or rather Mr. Eddie Reese, also says you don't want to share too much. And as parents or other trusted adults, it's your job to understand how you're processing everything yourself before speaking with children. Check your own uh, feelings and thoughts about it before you go talk to your children. If you feel terrified and you go, oh, I've got to talk to my kids about it, they're going to pick up that you're terrified. So if they're not they're going to then be terrified. Reese also suggests asking additional questions throughout the conversation to see how your child is processing what you're saying and make sure you speak to them in their own language on their own level. We're going to see a few showers to start off the day on Friday. We're going to go with a six on the wasometer. That's our scale from one to 11, where an 11 is a perfect day. It'll be a mild start with temperatures in the lower 60s. A few of those scattered showers that'll be around, but they'll be diminishing as they push down to the south and over to the east of us to around the lunchtime hour. And then in the afternoon, we're thinking we're going to see uh, the rain chances really low. Still a good coverage of clouds around, maybe a few peaks of sunshine with high temperatures getting up to about 71 degrees. Here's the timeline of what we're watching tonight mainly dry and then look what happens overnight and toward tomorrow morning. We're going to see some showers coming in from the north, pushing down closer to Atlanta. This is by seven in the morning, so expect to drive through some showers in the morning. But look what happens as this moves to the south and over to the east. A lot of it falls apart by lunchtime. We'll still have clouds around, but then in the afternoon hours, lower rain chances, a few showers possible here on the south side for Friday afternoon. I think it'll be dry Friday night and then Saturday looks like the best weather day. 
Saturday of the weekend. Even some breaks in the clouds here on Saturday afternoon to give us some sunshine uh, with uh, rain chances only at about 20%. I really think most of us will get through the day Saturday with no rain. Then on Sunday, another little disturbance moves through with some showers in the north Sunday morning and then by afternoon, just a few of those scattered showers will be here again, not raining all day long and not a torrential downpour either. So as we look at those rain totals, it's really not that impressive for tomorrow. I think it's less than a half inch with those higher amounts up in North Georgia. We're not really not going to add much to that on Saturday. Then on Sunday, another little batch of rain moves through. We've got those rain totals, the purple in Northwest Georgia indicating an inch and a half to two and a half inches around Atlanta, most likely still less than a half inch with maybe some of those higher totals west and north. And even into Monday, the rain totals don't go up that much. But once we get into Tuesday, that's when we see some of those amounts coming up to a half inch to an inch and a half. Now remember, this is between now and then, not all of that happening on Tuesday, but those higher amounts up in North Georgia. So by looking at this for the next uh, six to seven days, you see a rain totals here, maybe up to an inch and a half in Atlanta. And then on the north side, we could see some spots with two and a half to four inches. So I really think that the highest rain chances will be more up to the north uh, of us for this next week. But you can see, each and every day we have percentages there for some rain, but they kind of go up and down a little bit. 40% chance Friday, then a 20% chance Saturday, back to 60% chance on Sunday, a little lower on Monday with temperatures cooling off a little bit at 59 degrees. On Tuesday, we're back up to 60% with highs near 65, and then temperatures back to the 70s on Wednesday and Thursday with rain chances at about 30% Wednesday, 40% on Thursday, and with some of those scattered showers, it is possible that we could have some rumbles of thunder and flashes of lightning. But at this point, we're not seeing anything from the models that look that outstanding for a risk for severe weather. Ash with a MARTA bus kills five people, including a toddler and a four-year-old child. What we are learning about the investigation. Accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you to do what I say. I'm no, my mama ain't faded. You could have super. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta, from movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the AC keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh. did I not text you? All right. Ah, it's in my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Oh, I, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've nice got guy. the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Chester. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh. Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. right, right. about that. Well, reward would be... Slimming down. Okay, yes. yeah, right, yeah, okay. Yeah, a little water yes. in my cup. And, and beautiful skin. <laughs> well, you know, well, even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not going to be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Some mornings what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Blog, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush.
everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic. A collision with a MARTA bus has killed five people, including a 19-month-old boy and a four-year-old girl. Atlanta police believe that speed may have been a factor in this when a Nissan carrying seven people lost control and crossed into oncoming traffic last night. That's when the bus traveling on Bolton Road near Donald Lee Holloway Parkway, uh, Hollowell Parkway hit the driver's side of the car. Latanya Trice says her daughter and grandchildren were inside that car. They had just left her home when she got the tragic call. I didn't know who, but I knew somebody didn't make it. And before she left, I was sitting in the, in the living room eating. She, she walked in the kitchen, she said, Mama. I said, yeah, baby. She said, I love you. I said, I love you too. And those was her last words to me. The 28-year-old driver and a 12-year-old girl are in critical condition at the hospital now. Investigators say no car seats were found in the car for the baby and four-year-old who died. The bus driver was taken to the hospital with minor injuries. The two passengers on board the bus were not hurt. There are a number of tips to prevent spreading germs. One of them, avoid touching your face, but that's not as easy as it sounds. It was created by the artist Hints. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. It they does. are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient. Yeah. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a new yeah. way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. So what's the best part about Uplink? Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together, we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together, we are unstoppable. Together, we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they yeah. would wait the next week. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home. From Health experts have simple advice to help us keep safe during the COVID-19 outbreak. Avoid large social gatherings, wash your hands a lot, and try to avoid touching your face. I know that sounds easy. It sounds easy, but it's really hard. Touching your face is one of those things we just like to do. Reveal investigator. Reporter Rebecca Lindstrom shows us why. Here's why it matters. Let's say I cough, then I touch this door. Excuse me. You come along, and then you get one of those annoying itches on your face. It's basic stuff, right? But here's what happened when I turn the camera 
on my coworkers. How hard is it not to touch your face? It is hard. All they had to do was try not to touch their face for 30 minutes. They just couldn't do it. Ah, I did it. Yeah, I definitely was aware that there was a camera filming me and I tried hard not to touch my face, but it's just so difficult. Difficult. Our producer Andre touched his face 19 times, all the while another coworker feverishly cleaned her workspace behind him. You know, you might have noticed a bunch of, um, or, you know, looking away because I'm going, I'm not supposed to do that. But even then, he couldn't stop. Most people we watched made contact about nine times. One, two, three, four, well, you get the idea. I still don't think this counts, but it's touching my face. COVID-19 is spread through droplets. Dr. Sujatha Reddy agrees there are parts of your face that carry more risk. You happen to put your hand near your mouth or your lips, and those secretions enter your body. Your eyes are another one. While it's believed coronavirus can live on a surface for several hours, the CDC says it's not aware of any surface-to-person transmission so far. Still, Dr. Reddy says there is no reason to not start learning good habits, especially with a virus that doesn't always come with those obvious clues. And that's part of the problem with this virus. We know the virus has been transmitted when a person didn't have symptoms. We're calling that asymptomatic transmission. So get out that disinfected fidget spinner and don't forget to clean your phone. Maybe you can use it to even record yourself. It is difficult because you don't know you're doing it. And you end up reaching up and touching. You're like, oh, wait, I touched. That's a tricky one. It is you're tough. rubbing it's, your eyes. You know, it's, it's something you, you don't think about it. And right. Right until all of a sudden you see that piece and you think. Right, I was going to say until someone has that? a camera on you. Yeah, I thought about <laughs> it. And I was like, I, I think I probably am more than mm -hmm. likely, right? Especially if you wear contacts all the time like yes. we do. Yeah. yeah, I think most of us wear contacts, and especially at night when you take them out. You mm -hmm. want to just readjust the yeah. eyes? Mm -hmm. It's All part right. of the deal. We're going to work on better habits, guys. Yes. Very eye opening. Too late for me. <laughs> <laughs> too late for you. Never too late. Never too late. All right, folks, it's almost 9 o'clock. We have a lot coming up on primetime news. Government leaders keep saying they now have the test they need to confirm COVID 19 cases, but we're hearing from viewers saying they're having no luck getting tested. Our reveal investigators are looking into their claims. And stick around until 10 o'clock hour uh, when we're going to speak to the governor one on one about the state's response to COVID 19. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. Georgia's first death from COVID-19, a sad development in a day filled with new information changing the way so many of us go about our daily lives. So we have a number of school closures or districts and colleges canceling classes, and you can see that list running at the bottom of your screen. The governor says we now have 31 cases in 12 counties, including that are still some uh, final confirmation that needs to be done by the CDC. And he says the state anticipates more cases and that we all need to be prepared. The governor also offered prayers for the family of Georgia's first coronavirus death. The 67 year old man was hospitalized at Wellstar Kennestone in Cobb County. Well, he tested positive for coronavirus on March 7th. In addition, the Department of uh, Public Health says the man had underlying medical conditions. The governor also issued a call to action tonight. We all need to take those steps to protect ourselves against the virus, but we must especially remember to help those most at risk, the elderly and those with chronic conditions. We do have team coverage tonight bringing you the very latest on the local closures and impacts of coronavirus. We're also trying to take away some of the fear over social distancing. We began at the state capitol where the governor urged people not to panic. But there is a definite change in the tone of his message. Joe Hinkey has a chance to had a chance to speak with him today. The governor and the Department of Public Health in that press conference late this afternoon announced that they will be releasing more information moving forward about confirmed COVID-19 cases. Yesterday, we first reported that the state had been directing us to the state's website for the most up-to-date numbers, but after uh, we asked questions about the cases, those numbers around 2 p.m. yesterday disappeared. We also had been hearing this week from 11 Alive viewers who contacted our newsroom expressing concerns about hospitals and county health boards announcing positive cases 
but not seeing those numbers reflected in the state's official total. Now live on the state health department's website, there is data breaking down confirmed cases by county, age groups, and sex. We can tell you there is only one child confirmed with COVID-19 in Georgia. The majority of cases, people 18 to 59, with nearly 40% over the age of 60. More men have also tested positive currently in Georgia than women. There is a delay with those numbers, though. I'm told those numbers on the state's website will be updated around midnight every day. So those numbers that we are showing right now are from as of midnight um, or first thing this morning. The commissioner for the Department of Public Health also asked today about that first death in Georgia. She said she expects many, many more COVID-19 cases in Georgia, many of those to be serious, but she did add some important context. Also to remember that the majority of the time, 80% of the time, this is a very mild disease. And we are right now testing the most severely ill people. And so our, the rate of, of a poorer outcome among the currently known cases is going to be much higher than if we actually had a screening program to screen every Georgian. And in his press conference, Governor Brian Kemp did not mandate any school closures or local governments to close, but he did ask local governments if they have staff that can telework or stay home, that they that he would like them to take that move as far as schools and daycares. Uh, he did not ask any of them to close, but if they can shut down for two weeks as early as tomorrow, he said he would like to see school districts and daycares take that move. All right, thanks a lot, Joe. You know, this started with just a handful of schools out there, but by the end of the business day, all public colleges in Georgia and several private schools are now learning online as more COVID-19 cases are confirmed. Latasha Givens has reaction. Emory sophomore Grant Britton is glad the university was one of the first in our state to move to online learning as the confirmed coronavirus cases continue to rise. I feel like the situation is under control here in the U.S., but... Given that it could easily be very contagious, then I think that it would probably be the best option to do what they're doing with shutting down all the schools. When the dorms close, he'll have to go back home to Nashville, along with his brother, a student at Vanderbilt, whose campus is also closing. He says reimbursement for room and board will come soon. We haven't been given specific monetary values of how much they'll return us for our room and board, but they said that there will be at least some reimbursement. We decided to move to an, a fully online platform and ask our students to stay at home and uh, operate online. Oglethorpe, SCAD, Clark Atlanta University, Spelman and Morehouse Colleges are all moving to digital learning. All on-campus, campus-sponsored activities are canceled for the duration of the semester. Every college we spoke with says arrangements will be made for students who can't move back home. Late Thursday afternoon, the University System of Georgia, which includes GSU, UGA, and Georgia Tech, decided to follow suit. So we reached out to the colleges to see how they are preparing, how they're going to help those students find alternative housing and what they're doing about fees for, you know, for paid room and board. And we're posting all of those responses on our website at 11alive.com. President Trump's decision to place a travel restriction on 26 European countries sparked criticism overseas. The restrictions, which go into effect Friday, only apply to foreign nationals. It does not include U.S. citizens or their family members. It does not include the U.K. and is only for people, not goods. Some Americans rushed to European airports thinking initially they needed to return home before the deadline tomorrow. One passenger says the uncertainty was really scary. I think a lot of people panicked last night when it wasn't clear that like American citizens could still return home. So I know a lot of people that were freaked out and trying to change their flights like yesterday. There's definitely been like a lot of uncertainty, which has caused a lot of like panic. The restrictions will last for the next 30 days. Georgia lawmakers are now adapting their schedule to the outbreak of the coronavirus and they're suspending the legislative session starting next week but plan a return at an unspecified time. 11 Alive's Doug Richards spoke to lawmakers at the state capitol about shortening the legislative session. These are hard decisions to have to make. House Speaker David Ralston would only say that the legislative calendar is in flux. The capitol becomes one of the most crowded buildings in downtown during the 40-day legislative session. And many lawmakers would like to make an expeditious exit. COVID-19 is, is a pandemic. Bob Trammell is the House Minority Leader. You know, this is a public health issue. 
Uh, the CDC guidance is, is generally to avoid large gatherings. Obviously, the Capitol is a large gathering of people from all over Georgia. Today, the House sent to the governor a budget resolution, the only law the legislature is legally required to pass. Lawmakers don't have much stomach to delay the conclusion of the session, fueling speculation for an early exit. I think the best thing to do at this point in time is to err on the side of caution. By the way, today was crossover day, one of the most important days on the legislative calendar when many bills die if they are not passed by either the House or the Senate. One bill that passes both chambers today tightened the rules on ethylene oxide. This is the gas, of course, used at medical sterilization companies like Sterigenics in Cobb County and BD in Covington. Other bills that passed include a bill regulating coal ash ponds and a bill that would criminalize college hazing. I'm Melvin Lopez in the newsroom, and as we continue to take precautionary measures against COVID-19, many of you have questions. So we brought in 11 Alive medical correspondent, Dr. Sujantha, ready to talk to us about some of those questions. Some places like nursing homes and healthcare facilities are screening those coming in for any coronavirus symptoms, yet you can still have the virus and show zero symptoms for days. Recent data has told us that symptoms typically appear at about five days, mm -hmm. but before that, you may not have a fever, you may not have the, right. a cough, but you have the virus and you may be able to spread it. Travel from Europe to the U.S. will be restricted, although this doesn't apply to U.S. citizens or permanent residents, meaning you can still travel, but how could that impact your return? So you may be able to leave okay. When you come back, you may be possibly held at the airport or not allowed to come back. I, I, the realm, ramifications are innumerable. I don't know how to, we don't know what's going to happen. Those affected the most by the virus outside of the elderly are people who already have underlying medical conditions. But what does that mean? So when we use the term underlying medical condition, we're talking about something where someone goes to a doctor and has medication on a standing basis for that condition. So what we're talking about would be something like you mentioned, asthma. Other ones, what we've been told with this one are important are heart disease and um, high blood pressure. Um, if you happen to have any sort of lung disease, that can be an issue because this seems to be a respiratory um, uh, virus. Well, as you know, doctors just keep warning us to take precautions to make sure people stay safe during this pandemic. But following those precautions like canceling major events can make people a lot more nervous out there. Caitlin Ross explains why this type of social dist distancing is necessary. There's a trending hashtag on Twitter right now, cancel everything. And that's kind of how it feels. Every few minutes we hear of another big event, conference, concert, charity gala, all being canceled. It feels like a really big deal. It's scary and unfamiliar, but people who study this actually say it's the right call. The idea is to flatten the curve, stop the spread of the coronavirus before it overwhelms the healthcare system. This graphic from the CDC illustrates how this would work well. If we did nothing right now, carried on exactly as normal, we would end up here in this dark red part. The healthcare system would be overrun, above max capacity, and unable to care for people who are really sick. By slowing down the spread of the virus, we stay here in the blue, where people still get sick, but it's at a level where the doctors and hospitals can still manage it and treat people who need it. You slow it down by washing your hands, not touching your face, and practicing social distancing. Monday was the first time I heard that term. So what does it mean? We're used to coming into really close contact with people at those public events that everyone's canceling right now, but also in our everyday lives, like meetings where we sit right next to each other. The idea is not to do that. Practicing social distancing means staying about six feet away from other people, and that can be hard and uncomfortable. But if we want to stay out of this red zone, it's necessary until COVID-19 is under control. We have the latest coronavirus updates all in one place to make them easy to find and understand. And you can look for the articles in the coronavirus section of the 11 Alive app. You follow the recommendations of your employer, your doctor, all the experts, and still cannot get tested for coronavirus. So what do you do? Coming up, why some symptomatic patients say they're not being tested. Chief Meteorologist Chris Holcomb is live on Facebook right now taking your weather questions. You can join the conversation. On his Facebook page, we're going to catch up with him right after the break. 
And don't forget, we're also streaming right now on the 11 Alive YouTube page. So go ahead and subscribe and join the conversation in the community section. More 11 Alive news in prime time after the break. Park weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hot spots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Crog Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel it's good vibe. We vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're gonna get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. Where are the tests? The federal government says millions of coronavirus tests are available in Georgia and more are coming next week. But we're hearing from symptomatic people who say they cannot get tested. So we're dedicating an entire team of investigative journalists to this issue as part of our commitment to helping with facts, not fear. 11 Alive Chief Investigator Brendan Keefe shows us why people who meet the criteria say they can't get tested. So I call my doctor this morning and it starts this two and a half hour runaround. And the conclusion I have is no one has tests. Cheryl doesn't want us to use her last name, but she does want us to find out why she can't get a coronavirus test. <coughs> I'm sorry. They told me to call the health department. We talked with Cheryl by FaceTime because she says she has COVID-19 symptoms, including a fever, dry cough, and trouble breathing. She's also in two high-risk groups, over 60, with a compromised immune system. Hopefully I don't have it, but I don't know. If I do have it, I don't want to infect all these people, but with a, no way to get a test, how do you know? Call your doctor's office if you believe you may have the novel coronavirus. Within hours of that statement, call logs confirm Cheryl called her general practitioner's office, which she says gave her a coronavirus hotline for the hospital physicians group. She says the hotline told her they don't have any tests yet. Cheryl called her county and state health departments, which she says referred her to the CDC in Atlanta. She says the CDC insisted only her general practitioner could order a coronavirus test, so she called back. The doctor's office recommended she call her employer. After two and a half hours on the phone, still no test. It's a vicious cycle. Call here, call here, call here, call here. Everybody's referring you around. I'm calling to see how I could get tested for COVID-19. We called some of the same numbers and got the same answer. No testing. When we look at COVID-19, it's gone around the world in about two months. University of Georgia infectious disease expert Dr. Jose Cordero says we should be testing people like Cheryl. And she's already self-quarantined because of a suspected case at work. Is that someone you would want to see tested? Well, if we take uh, the recommendations of the current recommendations of CDC, she would qualify for, for testing. Coronavirus is now spreading in communities in the U.S., leading the CDC to allow doctors to order tests based on symptoms alone. But the physicians group hotline we and Cheryl called is still asking about foreign travel as a prerequisite for testing. Testing they say they're not yet set up to do. And the first question out of everybody's mouth is, have you been exposed to someone that's had a positive test? 
Well, that's craziness because they don't have tests available. The United States now is an affected country. The system where you put it out there in the public and a physician asks for it and you get it. The okay. idea of anybody getting it easily the way people in other countries are doing it, we're not set up for that. Do I think we should be? Yes, but we're not. Nations like South Korea are testing tens of thousands of people every day. In two months, the CDC and state health departments are reporting testing only 11,078 samples. That is a failing. And a that, failing, yes. It, it is a failing. I mean, let's admit it. Well, the Georgia Department of Health, which Cheryl did call, mm -hmm. is sending out an alert to all doctors, underscoring the CDC's latest guidance. Doctors don't need approval or a kit, just their opinion and a swab, and they can send that to a commercial lab. And we're going to continue to follow up with Cheryl and every link in this chain to find out where the tests are and how at risk can, you know, how they can get them. It is our ongoing commitment to to you to uncover what's going on with testing. We're constantly updating our 11 Live app and bringing you the very latest on the coronavirus in efforts to fight it here in Georgia. That's also where you're going to find school closures and event cancellations anytime 24-7. Storm trackers here with you live on the ATL as well as my phone standing right here uh, as I am on with about 200 between 200 and 250 people on Facebook Live and we've been discussing weather and the storms that are out to the west. A lot of folks are wondering if those storms in Tennessee uh, and, and Kentucky and back into Arkansas are going to make it our way. So I'm going to break that down for you. If you have additional questions about the weather, though, join us in the conversation on my Facebook page, Chris Holcomb 11 Alive. Here's what's happening now. No rain in our area. That's a good thing. But let me take you out to the north and to the west. And this is where we have the storms. Let's start with this up into Kentucky first, where we have some showers and storms that are rolling through a tornado watch in effect. We do have a severe thunderstorm warning with this. We had some tornado warnings earlier in Kentucky, but those have expired. And I had someone on Facebook Live just a moment ago really concerned about her daughter in Nashville after, you know, what they dealt with last week with the or, you know, with the tornadoes that came by a couple weeks ago. Nashville is not in the tornado watch, and I really think the stronger storms are going to stay up to the north of them. Now, as I take you back here into uh, parts of Arkansas, southern Missouri, here's another tornado watch with this line of storms that is prompting some severe thunderstorm warnings as well. And I know that whenever we are tracking these storms to the west, people get concerned, wondering if they're going to come our way. I'm not worried about severe weather for us tonight. We'll keep an eye on these showers that are developing here over the Mississippi and Alabama line. They have some thunder and lightning with them, but they're not classified as severe. And I even think these are going to be weaker by the time they make it into our area. So let's take a look at the bigger picture. Let me show you what we're watching out there right now, where we have that severe weather risk that is mainly going to be out to the west and north of us. We don't really have all of the ingredients here in our area for a big time severe weather risk here. So it's gonna weaken as it moves in. And earlier, if you were watching us, we had talked about that marginal risk or the dark green color that was coming in to far north Georgia. Well, that's now taken out of our area. The Storm Prediction Center has taken that out. So I'm not concerned about severe weather for us. Temperatures have been very warm. We got up to 76 degrees for a high temperature today. Right now, we're still holding in the 70s at 70 degrees. It's 72 in Peachtree City, uh, 72 in Rome, 70 in Dalton. Most places have dropped down into the 60s, but that's still really mild. And we will hold in the 60s for the overnight hours. And by tomorrow morning, starting off in the lower 60s, we'll have more clouds around. And then look at this, have some showers in the morning as well. So we're going to go with the six on the wasometer. That's our rating from 1 to 11, where an 11 is a perfect day. Highs near 71. The rain chances will be higher in the morning hours. Here's that system that's coming through. This is at seven showers over North Georgia. Again, not severe. Those come through Atlanta during the morning hours. And then as it pushes east and south, it starts to fall apart uh, dry later in the afternoon and really for much of the evening. And of the weekend days, Saturday's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be the best day. Mostly cloudy skies to start. Uh, some sunshine breaking through during the afternoon, but we're just going with a 20% chance for a shower on Saturday. And then on Sunday, <laughs> Excuse me, Sunday, a few showers begin to develop over far north Georgia. Those push down closer to Atlanta around lunchtime, and then we'll have scattered showers throughout the day on Sunday. But again, we don't expect anything really strong with that either. So here's the seven day outlook. Uh, watch these rain chances, a 40% chance for showers on Friday, and then down to only a 20% chance on Saturday. 
up to a 60% chance on Sunday and then 40% chance Monday. So you see the ups and downs here, back to 60% Tuesday and then 30% Wednesday and into Thursday with high temperatures that'll move back into the 70s. So I know you see raindrops every single day, but it's not gonna be raining constantly for seven days. It's gonna be those up and down rain chances with off and on showers. We are 19 weeks away from the Summer Olympics. As of now, the games are still on. Today, they lit the Olympic flame in Greece. No crowds there as a precaution. The first woman to be the first torchbearer since 1936 started the Olympic relay. A middle distance runner for Team USA, Rebecca Mira, talked about a personal experience that's worth sharing. It reminds us all to have compassion as we face coronavirus together as a community. Rebecca was at a grocery store, heard an older woman calling out from inside the car. She and her husband are in their 80s. They were afraid to go inside. So in tears, the woman cracked the window, put some money on a grocery list out asking for help. So Rebecca got those groceries, then put them in the couple's trunk. It is a time when people are worried. They are feeling unsure. We have to come together to help the people around us who are most vulnerable. Doctors keep stressing that is people over 60, people with other health issues, and we all can look for ways to help. Rebecca learned that not everyone has people to turn to. It's something to consider. To musicians and photographers alike, You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. They are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient. Fun. Yeah. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. we have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a yeah. new way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. So What's the best part about Uplink? Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together, we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together, we are unstoppable. Together, we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they yeah. didn't wait the next week. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. Only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Well, it has been the most surreal 24 hours of sports that I have ever seen. The entire sports world has been turned upside down because of the coronavirus. The NBA, Major League Baseball, NHL, and Major League Soccer have all suspended their seasons. March Madness has been canceled. There won't be a Frozen Four and no College World Series. As of right now, NASCAR is having its next two races, including the race this weekend at Atlanta Motor Speedway, without fans. The PGA Tour has banned fans as well. Now, it's worth noting we haven't heard back yet from Augusta National Golf Club regarding the Masters. Now, I'm not going to lie. I'm sad. I love sports. But what's going on in the world right now is serious, and suspending play is the right thing to do. If giving up sports for a little while will help get the virus spread under control, then I'm all for it, and you should be too. No game or tournament is worth potentially spreading this virus. So no live sports for a while. You could watch movies, you could read a book, or hear me out, you could spend some time with your family. 
It's a novel concept, I know. We will continue to have sports segments on this station, and I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't really know what that's going to look like, but we'll have it. And we'll dedicate that time to continue to show you the power of sports. It's a power that becomes even more apparent when times are tough and things seem uncertain. But even without games, there's still plenty to talk about, like where will Tom Brady land? Do the Braves have a World, World Series caliber roster? Can Atlanta United continue to play well without Joseph Martinez? Who should the Falcons draft? I mean, I can go on and on. But it all seems insignificant right now, but sports will go on here, and sports around the world will eventually return. But for now, let's help one another out. Let's be smart, let's be safe, and wash your hands. That's it for sports. We'll be right back. Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go to waste. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Auntie. No. Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. See, I just do what I say. I'm no, 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 You can assume Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, it's in my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm -hmm. Stop. I, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah. I've like got the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess? I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh, Jess, Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to Welcome to the reveal on Prime Time. I'm investigator Rebecca Lindstrom. A Georgia animal rescue is at the center of a multi state investigation that triggered the surrender of nearly 70 animals. Investigators now want to know where the money donated to care for these dogs has gone, since many were found malnourished and lacking medical care. <laughs> brown terrier mix was certainly in need of rescue after being hit by a car in South Georgia. He had bilateral femur fractures, a fractured pelvis, a ruptured bladder. The animal rescue Dragon Paws rushed to his aid, asking for donations to pay for his care. The dog, later named Highway, was a social media hit. On the mend, Highway went to a medical foster in Florida to finish his recovery. But instead of a clean home with specialized care, this is what Leah Moore found when she walked on property with sheriff's deputies. There were 50 some odd dogs in cages stacked upon one another in their own urine and feces. 
in every room of that house. The same house where they slept, in fact. The Union County Sheriff in Florida called Guardians of Rescue to seize the dogs on this property in early February amid concerns of animal cruelty and neglect. Moore says vet records show Highway's bladder was fixed, but six months later, there is no evidence Dragon Paws ever treated his leg. The foster family said that they, they duct taped it to his body and they didn't know what to do. Literal dead weight. It looks like Highway started to chew it off. And he wasn't the only dog with special needs left in the care of Sandra Abels. Every animal on that property, with the exception of, I think, a handful, had hookworms. Forget the fact that we had medical dogs there. The basics were not taken care of. Basics like food. This is a picture of Marcy from a Dragon Paws post on Facebook. But this is how law enforcement found her. We don't want to talk to anybody about anything going on. The reveal traveled to Florida to ask Sandra Abels and her husband about the dogs. We're not going to make any comments. OK. Have, have you been taking care of the dogs? Can we ask you to please leave? All right. Neighbors say the dirt road leading to their house had just days prior been flanked with those no trespassing signs. What was their justification for not getting them help? They were just the fosters and not the people who manage the finances that allow for them to go get veterinarian care and have it paid for. And when they pointed the finger at somebody who was the financial mechanism, where did they point that finger? To Denise and Dragon Paws. Dragon Paws. It is a nonprofit with a presence in three states, Virginia, Georgia, and Florida. Terry Nicole is listed as president, but the Georgia license is held by his wife, Denise. It is unclear if they knew the Abels had other dogs on their property or lacked the resources to give them proper care. This one is going to be a very complex case. Sheriff Brad Whitehead says this is the kind of animal neglect he will not tolerate in his county. They're helpless. Animals are helpless. That's uh, ridiculous that um, if you can't take care of them, you don't need to have them. Investigators are now looking looking into how much Dragon Paws raised through social media like Facebook and where that money went. There are dogs like Lulu and Brooks. Dragon Paws held two fundraisers to get the dogs fixed, but seven months later, Moore says law enforcement found the dogs in the same pen, still not fixed, with yet another litter. That defeats the whole purpose of what we do. You're supposed to be fighting against the overpopulation right. problem. The sheriff's office questioned Denise Nicole for more than two hours about what she knew and why she kept giving the Abels more dogs. We had the same questions. You just know there was a lot of money raised, a lot of questions about I am where working that money with went. law enforcement for the animals. Is there anything you can say to the people who no, want to sir. support Dragon Paws uh, no. that just don't understand what's going on? I am not allowed to say anything at this point. The Georgia Department of Agriculture has since suspended the rescue's license. Moore knows this looks bad, not just for Dragon Paws, but for all rescues where trust is essential. Just hoping for up from here. There are no taxpayer dollars to care for these dogs. Rescues have to rely on private donations to help the thousands of animals that would otherwise be killed. This has to be known so that the rescues doing what they're supposed to do can get the funding that shouldn't be going to rescues who are not doing what they're supposed to do. Georgia Senator Kay Kirkpatrick has introduced a bill that would bar anyone convicted of animal cruelty from getting a license in Georgia to operate a rescue or breed dogs. And it would require those that do get a license to have insurance to cover the costs if someone else does have to step in. It's skin in the game right. for people who are in that business. Because rescue operations are expensive. On property that day, we had two veterinarians that were on staff being paid. We had behaviorists, trainers, handlers, and of course, your volunteers. We rented vans in order to be able to do transports. Highways vet bills alone could run about $2,000. That injured leg now gone. Based off what you have seen, do you feel like a crime was committed? Are there criminal charges here? There's no doubt in my mind. No doubt at all. As Highway bounces in the grass, the leg finally gone, it seems all is forgiven. But humans aren't so quick to forget. A Senate bill passed this week that would require rescues and breeders in Georgia to have insurance to cover the cost of a seizure like this one. It would also bar anyone convicted of animal cruelty from getting a license to own a rescue or breeding facility.
You can see more in-depth investigations like this one by going to our website at 11alive.com. And don't forget to watch The Reveal, the only local investigative show in the country, Saturday at 1030, right here on the ATL. We're keeping an eye on some storms that are well out to the west right now. Nothing is going on here in Atlanta, but we do have these storms uh, that are uh, in parts of uh, uh, Kentucky trying to move into the northern parts of Tennessee. This is the first area that we're watching here. There's a tornado watch in effect there. And then also another uh, rain system and storm system that has prompted another uh, tornado watch through parts of southern Illinois, parts of Missouri, into Arkansas. We even have some uh, stronger storms here prompting severe thunderstorm warnings in parts of Arkansas uh, that is just to the south and west of Little Rock. Now, we're not overly concerned about this system. It is going to be moving closer to us. However, it's going to be weakening as it moves in. It's going to be coming this way, but it's going to be a lot weaker. There, it, We are watching right here uh, some areas of thunder and lightning coming into northwestern parts of uh, Alabama. But as that moves into our area, yes, we're going to have some showers overnight and into tomorrow morning, but we're not expecting anything severe with that. In fact, take a look. I want to show you what we've been dealing with out there for today. This is a look at the Almanac. It was really hot today or warm today, if you want to say warm versus hot. 76 was our high temperature for this afternoon. Uh, the average high for this time of year is 64. So we were about 12 degrees above the average today, but still not a record. The record for today's date, 83 degrees. Our low this morning also mild. It should be around 43 at this time of year. And we're going to continue with this mild air, but it's also uh, very moist air, a lot of moisture content in the air. Today we picked up only about four hundredths of an inch of rain. Others picked up a little bit more, but look at this surplus. We're about a foot over where we should be in rainfall for the year. And we have some more coming. Stay with us. We're going to break down our rain chances as we round up the week and go into the weekend and even into next week. More on that in just a few minutes. Here are some of the other stories we're following in our speed feed tonight. Police have made an arrest in the murder of a convenience store owner. The Cap County police say they arrested 42 year old Ronnie Miller this morning. They say he's one of three suspects wanted for the murder of 57 year old Tess Faye Bureau, who was shot and killed last month while locking up the TikTok store on Evans Mill Road. Two others are still wanted. Police say tips they received after the family held a press conference last week helped them identify Miller. Two of the four people accused in the death of 21 year old Hannah Bender were in court today. 19 year old Dylan Reed and 18 year old Isaac Huff pleaded not guilty at their arraignment today. They along with 24 year old Austin Stryker are accused of killing Bender. Stryker and 78 year old Jerry Harper waived their appearances. Harper is accused of helping cover up the murder. A Coweta County Sheriff investigator now warning people about a kidnapping scam. They say someone is getting a call that their child is being held in the back of a van and they've got to pay to get them back. Victims can even hear their child or a child screaming for help in the background. They say the best thing to do is to hang up the phone, but if you talk to the caller, don't say your loved one's name. Ask to speak to a family member directly and ask questions only your child would know how to answer, like the name of the family pet. Also, contact your child and ask them to call you from their cell phone to make sure that they are A-OK. -okay. As the coronavirus spreads, it's so important to maintain your overall health. Next, medical correspondent Dr. Sujatha Reddy has tips on how you can boost your immune system. <laughs> skin, you know, when it's all hydrated and everything else. It's not going to be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Some mornings what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Blog, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Blog on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends.
News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Crog Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pretty eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel it's good vibe. We vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're gonna get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. It they does. are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient. Yeah. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time act. schools now making the decision to close after Governor Kemp encouraged the move in a press conference earlier today. Fulton County Schools, Atlanta Public Schools, and Cobb County Schools just the latest to make the call. Meanwhile, the University System of Georgia announced classes will be suspended for two weeks at all of its colleges and universities. We want to remind you we have a list of all these closures on our website, 11alive.com. We also have a running list at the bottom of your screen. We're working around the clock to keep you updated on all of these coronavirus-related closures. Coronavirus is impacting daily lives in many ways. People over 60 with chronic medical conditions are most at risk. And now with the virus spreading more, we're hearing more numbers in Georgia and throughout the world. It's Paramount. We take the measures we each can to stay healthy. Joining us is 11 Alive medical correspondent, Dr. Sujatha Reddy. Our immune systems are such a key. People who have low immune systems are more at risk. Is there anything each person could do to try to boost our immune systems to help protect us in ways that we can. Yeah, I think that's a really important topic to discuss. One thing with your immune system, though, is these are not things that are going to work overnight. But, you know, this may last for a few weeks and hopefully not more than that, but it's quite possible it's going to last for a month or so. And in that case, I think it's not too late to try to help your immune system. So the things that we recommend are the things all of us should be doing all the time anyway. These are common New Year's resolutions. Mm -hmm. So some specific things pe people can do to help their immune system. You're going to want to eat plenty of fruits and vegetables, like a healthy diet. Get enough sleep. That's probably one of the most important things we can all do. You know, at least seven hours as an adult, maybe even more. You want to keep active, be exercise, be physically fit, have some energy endurance. That's going to help you. If you're a smoker, absolutely quit smoking because that has all the negatives and absolutely nothing positive. Mm. Limit your alcohol. Make sure you're also controlling other conditions. If you have high blood pressure, you have diabetes, keep those in check. That's very important because all that does affect your overall health. And then we've heard it before, but I'm going to say it again. Preventing the infection is going to be key. Slowing it down, as we've heard. So wash hands. Mm -hmm. Keep a distance. If you're sick, stay home and try to avoid touching eyes, nose, and mouth, and all those things should help us through this crisis. You know, really, preparation is a way that it can it can set, settle us if we know we are prepared in some ways. And there are specific guidelines about what we can do to be ready if it does come to our doorstep, if our loved ones or we get sick. Yeah, you're exactly right. And I think that will f make us feel somewhat empowered because to some degree, I think a lot of us are feeling like a little bit helpless. It's out of it's control, just, yeah. It is. It's just happening around us. So you're right. Being prepared. What do we mean by that? We've been told by the authorities, 
be ready in case you can't leave your house, you're quarantined or store shut down. Be prepared in your home for two to four weeks. The most important advice there, I think, is make sure you have a minimum 30, maybe even 90 day supply of prescription medication. That's gonna be key. Mm. Beyond that, you also wanna make sure you have medications at home for the common over-the-counter complaints that a lot of sure. us sometimes get. Things like headaches, if you get you know, Tylenol or Advil, mm -hmm. you know, cough medicine. If you have bowel issues, diarrhea medicine, those kind of things, keep those okay. on hand because you may not be able to run out and get them. You also wanna make sure you have, if you have high blood pressure, a blood pressure cuff. So you can monitor at home. You may not be able to go to the fire station and get your blood pressure mm -hmm. checked. If you have diabetes, a glucose monitor, things like that. Think, think a little bit ahead about what you might need and you may not be able to run out. And I think that'll keep people empowered and safe if they're in their homes. All right. Important to reiterate, 80% of people have mild symptoms, but we must be prepared. Absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Reddy. Appreciate it. You know, we want to remind you the CDC recommends cleaning surfaces like tables, doorknobs, and light switches use household cleaners and EPA registered disinfectants to clean those surfaces. If you don't have any of these, here's another option. Uh, use diluted household bleach or alcohol solutions with at least 70% alcohol. Remember to wear rubber gloves and eye protection when using chemicals inside your home. Also, if you're cleaning inside, uh, windows and doors should be open up to allow some fresh air in. And after you're finished up, make sure you use those chemicals, you keep those chemicals out of the reach of children. We have put all the latest coronavirus updates all in one place and make them easy to find and understand. Just look for the article for the coronavirus section of our 11 Alive app. We had a pretty nice day out there today. We mentioned earlier that high temperature that made it up to 76 degrees. Uh, not a lot of sun. We had clouds, but also not a lot of rain. In fact, we're not seeing rain out there right now. We're watching this next system, though, that's moving our way, and it's prompting a tornado watch in the southern parts of Kentucky and northern Tennessee, also back into Arkansas, the southeastern parts of Missouri as well. And then also keeping an eye on this. These are some showers and a few thunderstorms that have developed coming out of Mississippi, moving into northwest Alabama. Alabama. They have some thunder and lightning with them, but they're not severe. As this moves closer to Georgia, they will weaken a little bit. We'll still have some showers here, mainly the uh, overnight hours into early in the morning. But again, we're not expecting anything severe with this. Just don't be surprised if there are a couple of rumbles of thunder and flashes of lightning as that moves into West Georgia a little bit later on. So let me show you the bigger picture of what we are watching out there going through the rest of the nighttime hours. This is a live look uh, from Rome where things are looking pretty quiet in the downtown roads. Just a few cars that are moving through. Uh, we have uh, those clouds that are out there though, but no rain. The clouds that are there are not producing any showers. Take a look at these temperatures that we had out there today. It was very mild to start this morning in the 60s. We should start off in the mornings this time of year in the 40s. So 60s was very mild to start. We held in the 60s till about noontime and then look how these temperatures jumped. In fact, we got up to 76 degrees this afternoon. That was at five o'clock. Uh, and that was our high temperature. And we've been holding in those 70s ever since then through this hour. And we'll be dropping down into the 60s for the next hour. In fact, you can see what we're watching 70 here in town right now, 72 in Peachtree City. We have a lower 70s in Rome and in Dalton. Everywhere else pretty much in the 60s, but still that's very mild. And it's going to stay mild as we go through the rest of the overnight hours. Now we're going to be dealing with scattered showers. And when I show you the seven day forecast in just a few minutes, it's gonna have a raindrop on just about every single day. However, I want you to understand it's not gonna be a constant rain every single day. It's just gonna be scattered showers. There will be a lot of dry hours in between some of those showers and we're staying warm. Monday is gonna be the coolest day and that gets down to 59 degrees. Every other day is gonna be above average and we'll continue with those above average temperatures for a big part of the, of the seven day outlook as well. We're gonna go with the six on the wasometer. This is our scale from one to 11, where, where 11 is a perfect 11 alive day. It's gonna be nice, it was 71 for a high. Uh, showers are gonna be more likely in the morning hours tomorrow and then it'll be drier into the afternoon, still with the good coverage of clouds around. This is that system we're watching out to the west. I mentioned that over in Alabama, We'll see these showers moving in, hitting North Georgia for the overnight hours by morning. It'll be North Georgia and West Georgia coming closer to Atlanta throughout the morning hours. But a lot of that is going to be falling apart as it moves our way. Uh, so again, not an all day rain event. There will be a lot of dry hours. I really think the best chance of rain will be in the morning and then mainly dry in the afternoon. And on Saturday, starting off with mostly cloudy skies and of the two days of the weekend, 
even though Saturday's not going to be perfect, that's going to be the best day of the weekend with uh, only a 20% chance for a shower, even some breaks in those clouds to give us some sunshine. And then on Sunday, we see the rain chances coming back in the morning in North Georgia, moving into Atlanta around lunchtime and after and then scattered showers in the afternoon hours on Sunday as well. So here's that seven day outlook. I want you to notice each day has a, a rain chance, but it goes up and down 40% Friday. Saturday's the lowest rain chance. Then we're back to a 60% chance Sunday, down a little bit Monday, up again Tuesday, down a little bit Wednesday and into Thursday. And the temperatures are gonna be up and down too. Look at this, 59 for a high on Monday, uh, compared to going back to the 60s on Tuesday and then 70s for Wednesday and Thursday. Still to come, the best ways to talk to your kids about the coronavirus outbreak next. To musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. They <laughs> are fun. And they're, they're convenient. Fun. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. I just That's feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a new yeah. way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together, we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together, we are unstoppable. Together, we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they didn't ah. wait the next week. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. Only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. With schools closing and communities canceling events, parents might be wondering, how to explain what's going on to your children? You know, so we spoke with a professional counselor. His name is Eddie Rees for advice on having that difficult conversation. He says the number one rule here is to listen to your child first. Every child is different. And age, of course, plays a role in this. So hearing what they have to say will help you see where they are. And you might start asking the right questions, such as, what are you hearing about this? That gives you a chance to address any misinformation or calm any fears. Reese also says you shouldn't share too much information. He says trusted adults should process everything first before talking to their kids. Check your own uh, feelings and thoughts about it before you go talk to your children. If you feel terrified and you go, oh, I've got to talk to my kids about it, they're going to pick up that you're terrified. So if they're not, they're gonna then be terrified.
You know, Reese also suggests asking additional questions throughout this entire conversation just to see how your child is processing and what you're saying and make sure you speak to them on their level. It's funny, my little niece just yelled at her brother for not washing his hands oh. after the restroom. She's like, you better go back and wash, you're gonna get corona. There you go. And the kids will probably teach us as adults a lot yeah. about this too. They'll yeah. remember a lot of stuff that we might forget. They so. really do remember a lot. They, they they're do. little sponges. They, they are, that's right. Hey, take a look at this weather where we're going to see some uh, scattered showers tomorrow. Uh, the better rain chances in the morning and then we'll be a little drier in the afternoon. And then Saturday, only a 20% chance for a shower. And then the rain chances back up Sunday in the next week, kind of up and down rain chances as well as temperatures up and down too. Monday at 59 is the coolest and then in the lower 70s for the middle of next week. All right, thanks, Chris. Stick around. We have more news and the latest on coronavirus coming up in prime time at 10. Morning Rush, weekday 5 to 7 a.m. Only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boil Water Advisory. Hyperlocal, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you to do what I say. I'm no, 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 You could have super. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh. did I not text you? All right. Ah, I sent my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Mm. Oh, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've nice got guy. the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Chess? I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh, Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Oh, uh, yeah. okay. right, right. about I mean, that. Well, reward would be... Slimming down. Okay, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. A little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. Well, you well, know, I even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. It's not gonna be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning rush, weekdays, five to seven AM. Only on eleven alive. Some mornings what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the rush block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the rush block on the morning rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. <laughs> We now have 31 cases of coronavirus in 12 Georgia counties. That includes some who still need final confirmation by the CDC. Tonight, in about 10 minutes, I am going to speak with Governor Kemp, who says that more cases are coming to our state and Georgia is preparing to handle it. But first, here's what we know about the state's first coronavirus death. He was a 67-year-old man with underlying medical complications who was being treated at Wellstar Kennestone Hospital in Marietta. And his age and his medical condition put him in the group of people who were at a higher risk from COVID-19. Here's John Sherrick. 
In the U.S. as of tonight, 40 coronavirus deaths in six states, including one death now in Georgia. Almost all of the patients who died older than 60 with underlying medical conditions. It could be something like asthma. It could be diabetes or high blood pressure, but anything like a heart condition. 11 Alive medical correspondent Dr. Sujatha Reddy says most people in their 70s and older have underlying medical conditions based on current COVID-19 research. Yeah. The good news here is we know over 80% of people get mild symptoms where they don't even need to be hospitalized. So I think if you're not in that elderly population, you can breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief. But I think as a community, as a society, we have to do what we can do, even as we're not at risk, to protect the people that are. As it is, researchers say the numbers of deaths from coronavirus could depend largely on how many older people with underlying medical conditions end up exposed and infected. More than 250 cruise ship passengers, including 34 Georgians, wrapping up their second day under quarantine at Dobbins Air Force Base. They were flown to Cobb County after the coronavirus hit the Grand Princess cruise ship. Hope Ford spoke to one woman who says emotions are running high. On day two at Dobbins, people started raising concerns. One person tells us a meeting between passengers and officials with the Department of Health and Human Services got heated Thursday morning. There was a lot of angry people, a whole lot of angry people. Teresa Duncan Johnson arrived at Dobbins Wednesday. She's been updating her social media with videos and pictures. She describes the base as hotel-like, except for the fencing surrounding the quarantine zone. They're free to move around as long as they wear masks. But anxiety is settling in. Johnson says they've yet to be tested for the coronavirus. Full while we were on the ship, that everybody would be tested before we got off the ship. We thought, okay, when we get to Dobbins, they'll test us. As of today, nobody's been tested. Outside of testing, Johnson says several people are upset over being forced to stay. They would take measures to prevent you from leaving that would probably be very unpleasant. While Johnson is fine with the idea of staying the full 14 days, she says others feel like they're being treated like criminals. And they're questioning why are we not allowed to go, go home then and self-quarantine. On top of those concerns, Johnson tells me her husband is running low on insulin and they're struggling to find out how or when they'll manage to get more. Stock market had its biggest drop since the Black Monday crash of 1987. For those of us who were adults during that time, it is a day we will never forget. The day the Dow fell more than 2,300 points. The steep drops in the last month have wiped out most of the big gains on Wall Street during the Trump administration. Various businesses are doing what they can to try to limit panic and still help people. Target, Walmart, Kroger, and Publix are all limiting purchases of certain items. We're talking hand sanitizer, soap, and disinfectant to make sure there is enough to go around for everyone. And CVS is delivering prescriptions for free so people at higher risk for the virus, they can stay home. You can find more ways businesses are helping by heading to 11alive.com. President Trump's decision to place a travel restriction on 26 European countries sparked criticism internationally. The restrictions, which go into effect on Friday, only apply to foreign nationals. It does not include U.S. citizens or their family members. It does not include the United Kingdom. And it is only for people, not for cargo, not for goods. Some Americans rushed to European airports. They were thinking they needed to return home before the deadline tomorrow. One passenger says the uncertainty was frightening. I think a lot of people panicked last night when it wasn't clear that like American citizens could still return home. So I know a lot of people that were freaked out and trying to change their flights like yesterday. There's definitely been like a lot of uncertainty, which has caused a lot of like panic. As for the restrictions, they are expected to last for a month, about 30 days. Doctors keep warning us to take precautions to make sure people stay safe during this pandemic. But following those precautions, like canceling major events, can make people even more nervous. Caitlin Ross explains why this type of social distancing is necessary. There's a trending hashtag on Twitter right now, cancel everything. And that's kind of how it feels. Every few minutes we hear of another big event, conference, concert, charity gala, all being canceled. It feels like a really big deal. It's scary and unfamiliar, but people who study this 
actually say it's the right call. The idea is to flatten the curve, stop the spread of the coronavirus before it overwhelms the healthcare system. This graphic from the CDC illustrates how this would work well. If we did nothing right now, carried on exactly as normal, we would end up here in this dark red part. The healthcare system would be overrun, above max capacity, and unable to care for people who are really sick. By slowing down the spread of the virus, we stay here in the blue, where people still get sick, but it's at a level where the doctors and hospitals can still manage it and treat people who need it. You slow it down by washing your hands, not touching your face, and practicing social distancing. Monday was the first time I heard that term. So what does it mean? We're used to coming into really close contact with people at those public events that everyone's canceling right now, but also in our everyday lives, like meetings where we sit right next to each other. The idea is not to do that. Practicing social distancing means staying about six feet away from other people, and that can be hard and uncomfortable. But if we want to stay out of this red zone, it's necessary until COVID-19 is under control. Health experts have simple advice to help keep us safe during the outbreak. Avoid large social gatherings, wash your hands a lot, a lot, a lot, and make sure you stay f away from your face. Just, you know, that's something we all like to do. I know, hands are we're, so we're dry aware it right too. now yeah. too. Don't even know we're doing it. But that last one, not touching your face, Jeff, we just said that might be the hardest of them all. It you don't hard. even realize yeah. it. Reveal investigator Rebecca Lindstrom shows us why. Here's why it matters. Let's say I cough, then I touch this door. Excuse me. You come along, and then you get one of those annoying itches on your face. It's basic stuff, right? But here's what happened when I turned the camera on my coworkers. How hard is it not touch your face? It is hard. All they had to do was try not to touch their face for 30 minutes. They just couldn't do it. Ah, I did it. Yeah, I definitely was aware that there was a camera filming me and I tried hard not to touch my face, but it's just so difficult. Difficult. Our producer Andre touched his face 19 times all the while. Another coworker feverishly cleaned her workspace behind him. You know, you might have noticed a bunch of, um, or, you know, looking away because I'm going, I'm not supposed to do that. But even then he couldn't stop. Most people we watched made contact about nine times. One, two, three, for, well, you get the idea. I still don't think this counts, but it's touching my face. COVID-19 is spread through droplets. Dr. Sujatha Reddy agrees there are parts of your face that carry more risk. You happen to put your hand near your mouth or your lips, and those secretions enter your body. Your eyes are another one. While it's believed coronavirus can live on a surface for several hours, the CDC says it's not aware of any surface to person transmission so far. Still, Dr. Reddy says there is no reason to not start learning good habits, especially with a virus that doesn't always come with those obvious clues. And that's part of the problem with this virus. We know the virus has been transmitted when a person didn't have symptoms. We're calling that asymptomatic transmission. So get out that disinfected fidget spinner and don't forget to clean your phone. Maybe you can use it to even record yourself. It is difficult because you don't know you're doing it. And you end up reaching up and touching. You're like, oh, wait, I touched. See Addie back there in the background. She's been cleaning all day. We have the latest coronavirus updates in one place to make them easy to find and really understand it. You can look for the article in the coronavirus section of the 11 Alive app. Dry weather here right now, but we are tracking some showers and storms that have prompted tornado watches to the north and to the west. Stay with us. We'll let you know if this system is going to make it our way. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. 
An Atlanta icon, ever-changing, always interesting. The Crog Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel it's good vibe. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're going to get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street. Dry weather conditions out there tonight, and it's still very mild. We have temperatures that are generally holding in the upper 60s and lower 70s at this hour. We have no rain here at this uh, at right now, but we're watching these showers and even some storms. And there are a couple of areas that we're watching. Number one, this one that is uh, in parts of Kentucky and northern Tennessee, where we have thunder and lightning, a tornado watch in effect, and even within that right there on the Tennessee and Kentucky line, there's a severe thunderstorm warning with that area that uh, of rain and storminess that's moving over to the south and to the east. We're not worried about this area of rain or thunderstorms impacting us. We're also keeping an eye on this activity that is back into Arkansas that's causing severe weather. Another tornado watch there. That's going to move to move more to the south. What we're watching is this that is developing from Mississippi into Alabama. It's producing some thunder and lightning, but we don't see anything severe with this. That's going to be swinging into our area tonight overnight really and toward tomorrow morning with some showers, maybe some rumbles of thunder and flashes of lightning, but we're not expecting anything severe out of that for North Georgia or Metro Atlanta. In fact, let me break down for you what we're watching. I'm going to take you out there live first and you can see what we've got going on in the Rome area. Dry roads, just a few clouds around and no rain, but some showers expected there uh, during the overnight and toward tomorrow morning. The severe weather threat is mainly in those areas that where we just showed you a few minutes ago where we have those tornado watches that are already in effect. If you were with us earlier this morning, we were showing you how North Georgia was in a marginal risk, a level one risk. Well, that has been moving more and more to the north and it has been becoming more evident that that system really is not going to be strong enough to give us any severe weather here. And then during the day tomorrow, we're not concerned about severe storms either. So don't be worried about that overnight, even if you hear some thunder or a flash of lightning overnight and hear that rain coming in more toward tomorrow morning. It's very mild. 69 is the temperature right now. We made it up to 76 for a high today. We still have some 70s in Rome and Dalton. Uh, those are the only places with those 70s right now. It's close to it uh, down in the Noonan area in the upper 60s. We'll be holding in these 60s for the overnight hours and in, into tomorrow morning. And it's going to be the morning hours when we see some of those showers that make it here to the Atlanta area. We're just going to go with the six on the wisometer. Highs near 71 degrees. Here's the timeline of what we're watching and we're dry out there now. Now, here come those showers that will move through North Georgia early in the morning and then on down toward Metro Atlanta before they break apart. And then I think for the rest of the day, Friday, we're going to be dry. And Saturday looks like the driest day of the weekend with only a 20% chance for a shower. And then those rain chances continuing 60% to 40 back to 60 and then 30 to 40 again once we get toward the end of the week. Let's take a look at your weather wow moment. This is taken uh, yesterday by one of our 11 Alive Community Storm Trackers, Doc, um, a guy, Doc Steider. He sent us uh, the picture of this rainbow that he said his daughter took in the uh, Paulding County area last night or yesterday afternoon. We'd love for you to be a part of our weather wow moment. And the best way to do that is to share those pictures with us on the 11 Alive Storm Trackers page. Just search for that on Facebook and ask to become a member of this exclusive weather community. All right, Chris, thank you very much. New tonight, we are joined live right now from downtown Atlanta, the state capitol, from his office. Governor Kemp is with us. Governor, thanks a lot for joining us. We know you've had a very long day. We appreciate it. Good. As, as you get ready to go home tonight, Good evening. what keeps you up at night? What about this coronavirus as it continues to escalate, not only around the country, but in the state as well? What, what will keep you up? Well, I think, first of all, I tell people to remain calm. Uh, the risk for most Georgians remains low. 
the concern for me is as we continue to see this ramp up, um, it, it could put a strain on our health care facilities. So that's the reason today we rolled out the additional subcommittees from the uh, coronavirus task force dealing with the homeless, uh, homelessness and, and, or the homeless and the displaced and then also on really the preparedness when you think about logistics and supplies. So we're being very forward thinking there. I hope we never get to that day. Uh, but you can imagine if our healthcare facilities start filling up, people are gonna want us to have plans on where the overflow is gonna go and those are the kind of things that we're thinking about. We got great teams that are dealing with what's happening today, uh, but we've had a lot of people in the last couple of weeks and with our subcommittees that we're rolling out today, we'll have a lot more people to be focused on what's gonna be going on in a week two weeks in a month, uh, depending on how long this goes. We had a story about 10 minutes earlier in this broadcast, our Hope Ford was reporting from Dobbins Air Base tonight about these three dozen cruise ship passengers, uh, Georgians who believe that they would be released to their homes. That has not happened. The federal government, the HHS, has stepped in to say no. They feel they're under house arrest. Will the state do anything to try and free these people so that they can go home and begin their quarantine there? Well, we're certainly looking into that. That's an issue that it was our understanding when this the initial talks were going on that that would be the case. Um, I, I haven't heard from them as to exactly what is going on now, but we're glad to look into that and address that issue uh, if we're, you know, have the ability to do that. I okay. certainly share their concern, but also, I also know that the federal government perhaps will have reasons for that as well. And, would love to you know, hear from them on that issue. I've received uh, a number of emails tonight from contractors, small business owners, who wanted me to ask you about the possibility of relief for these business people that are greatly impacted by what is going on right now. Do you down the road see any kind of stimulus uh, or package system to try and help some of these people? Well, I think certainly the best place for that, in my opinion, is at the federal level, but I can assure you that with uh, the Lieutenant Governor Duncan and Speaker Ralston standing with me today, we're going to do everything that we can to keep our economy strong in our state. Obviously, this is going to have a big impact when you're canceling things like the final floor, uh, the start of the brave season, you know, NASCAR races with no fans and, and uh, no NBA games and other things that we've seen happening. Uh, but we're resilient people. We've been through tough times like this before. Uh, part of our economic um, subcommittee, if you will, from the task force today, that's going to be part of their job is to see what kind of ideas we can have so that we can, can keep as much of the economy rolling uh, during this tough situation that we're in, but also look to see how we can make it and have it come roaring back, which I know that it will do. An unprecedented move today. The state legislature has wrapped things up. How does that impact government? What, what does that mean by them closing shop early? How does that impact what you're trying to accomplish? Well, I think, I think Georgians should be uh, very proud of the steps that the legislature took today. Uh, we are putting them first. Um, basically, we're going to get through with our work tonight. Uh, they'll gavel in with uh, limited staff tomorrow to do first readings on bills and legislation to keep the process moving, moving, and then they will suspend the session. So it doesn't mean it's over. Uh, we'll just come back and finish our work at the appropriate time. But right now, for the safety, health, and welfare of our state and our citizens, all three of us, the Lieutenant Governor, the Speaker, myself, felt like this was a prudent move to do. For those people watching tonight that see these pictures at Publix, at Kroger, where people are wiping out fruits and vegetables and toilet paper and, and bottled water and all of that, what can you say to them tonight to give them some sort of peace that this is not necessary, that there is well, no need I'd, for I'd urge them just to remain calm. Yeah, just remain calm. Don't overreact. Save a loaf of bread for your neighbor. Um, we are not going to cut off the supply chains. We're going to make sure that those things continue to work. Uh, this, is, this is not going to be a, a two or a three day snowstorm. You know, we're going to be dealing with this for weeks, perhaps longer. Um, so people just need to have confidence that we're going to continue to communicate with them. You don't have to make a rush on, on supplies like that. Uh, save some for your neighbors. We're not going to restrict where you can't go buy groceries. 
or uh, have, uh, have access to public transportation and things of that nature. We just want people to be mindful uh, and not, especially our el elderly and vulnerable population, not to go out into public spaces to large events and really anyone should avoid large events if at all possible. If you're having to do things like that or you can't avoid it, make sure you're washing your hands, using your hand sanitizer, uh, use social distancing measures so you're not going to be in the line of fire if somebody you know, coughs or sneezes and they happen to be infected with the virus and they don't realize it. Just smart things that we can do to try to curb the trends that we're seeing and, the, and especially the curves that we've seen in South Korea, China, and Northern Italy. Governor Kemp, thank you very much. Yeah, I've, I've read a couple of things about Northern Italy here in the last uh, 15 or 20 minutes about uh, quarantining individual residences and communities. I mean, that, that, is, uh, that is very sobering to, to read what is going on in Northern Italy right now. Yeah, it's unprecedented times, but I can assure Georgians that we're going to remain calm and continue to act as needing and needed, and we will keep them posted. Governor Kemp, we appreciate your time tonight, and thank you very much for all of the information, and we will certainly be checking in with you tomorrow as we continue to uh, take a look at all of the developments, all of the moving parts of the coronavirus uh, going on right now. All right. Thank you, Governor. Appreciate it. You can go to 11alive.com for the very latest information on the virus and all of the information that you need to know. Again, 11alive.com is your place to go. We'll take a break. We continue right after this. And numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. So what's the best part about your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together our voices grow. Together we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together we are unstoppable. Together we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they yeah. would wait the next week. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South, and it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home, from different backgrounds, languages, and religions, and who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot, full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once an Olympic city, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us. Use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from 5 to 7 on The Morning Rush on 11 Alive. newscast not enough for you get even more at 11 alive's youtube channel where you'll find uncut all right folks you know what time it is you see your screen it is time for thursday's edition of the a scene and we are kicking off with a recap of film day at the capitol that went down yesterday so we actually got a chance to speak firsthand 
from officials about how the coronavirus is affecting production here. And on top of celebrating Georgia Film Day at the Capitol, multiple leaders and professionals toted the economic benefit the TV and film industry have had on the state. And we also asked officials about the state's plan if the coronavirus interrupts Georgia productions. So far, an upcoming reality television competition series was impacted when scheduled filming during South by Southwest was canceled and the Atlanta based production for the upcoming Disney Plus series, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier was canceled as well due to the government in Prague closing schools and other institutions. Now, a scene producer Ryan Dennis spoke with Burt Brantley, who is the CEO of the Georgia Department of Economic Development and asked him about precautions being taken. And Governor Kemp take a very proactive approach on really informing Georgians about what's happening and how the state is responding. Uh, and our, the film industry is no different than any other industry. They pay attention to those. Right now, it's business as usual. If you've ever been on a film set, they are very conscious about safety and health of all their workers. Uh, and so this is really something where we feel like they can continue to work. Uh, there's a usually closed set, so there's not big gatherings of people. And so this is an industry that can thrive. Yeah, and in the event that a TV and film production backs out amidst coronavirus concerns, companies will still be able to receive that Georgia tax credit incentive if their production has contributed more than $500,000 to the state. Who's ready to find the love of your life? <laughs> Let's go! Come on! Okay, so how would you like to be one of the 16 singles invited to a beautiful island where experts have single-handedly chosen you based on what they feel your chemistry will be with another possible suitor? Well, that's exactly what happens in the Lifetime show Married at First Sight, where couples have their honeymoon before their wedding. And guess what? The next season will be filming right here in Atlanta. You just need to be single, of course, not married. You need to live here in the city and be ready to take that leap of faith. Now, if you'd like to submit, the link is right there, smack dab on your screen. All I can say is good luck and tell them Francesca sent you. <laughs> As the coronavirus spreads, it's important to maintain your overall health. Next medical correspondent, Dr. Sujatha Reddy has tips on how you can boost your immune system. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Stop. I, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've like got the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh. Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Uh, uh, yeah. Right, right. About I mean, that. Well, reward would be... Slimming, Slimming down. Okay. Yes. Yeah, right, yeah, okay. Yeah. A little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. Well, you know, even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not going to be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Some mornings, what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Blog, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your Morning Rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hot spots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Crock Street Tunnel is full of artwork 
from some pretty eclectic Atlanta artists. Yeah, all we feel is good vibes. We vibe with it. It's a good time. We don't worry about the hate. We just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're going to get here. And that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Coronavirus is impacting daily lives in many ways. People over 60 with chronic medical conditions are most at risk. And now with the virus spreading more, we're hearing more numbers in Georgia and throughout the world. It's Paramount. We take the measures we each can to stay healthy. Joining us is 11 Alive medical correspondent Dr. Sujatha Reddy. Our immune systems are such a key. People who have low immune systems are more at risk. Is there anything each person could do to try to boost our immune systems to help protect us in ways that we can. Yeah, I think that's a really important topic to discuss. One thing with your immune system though is these are not things that are gonna work overnight, but you know, this may last for a few weeks and hopefully not more than that, but it's quite possible it's gonna last for a month or so. And in that case, I think it's not too late to try to help your immune system. So the things that we recommend are the things all of us should be doing all the time anyway. These are common New Year's resolutions. Mm -hmm. So some specific things peop people can do to help their immune system. You're gonna wanna eat plenty of fruits and vegetables, like a healthy diet. Get enough sleep. That's probably one of the most important things we can all do. You know, at least seven hours as an adult, maybe even more. You want to keep active, be exercise, be physically fit, have some energy endurance. That's going to help you. If you're a smoker, absolutely quit smoking because that has all the negatives and absolutely nothing positive. Mm. Limit your alcohol. Make sure you're also controlling other conditions. If you have high blood pressure, you have diabetes, keep those in check. That's very important because all that does affect your overall overall health. And then we've heard it before, but I'm going to say it again, preventing the infection is going to be key, slowing it down as we've heard. So wash hands, mm -hmm. keep a distance. If you're sick, stay home and try to avoid touching eyes, nose and mouth and all those things should help us through this crisis. You know, really preparation is a way that it can it can se settle us if we know we are prepared in some ways and there are specific guidelines about what we can do to be ready if it does come to our doorstep if our loved ones or we get sick. Yeah, you're exactly right. And I think that will f make us feel somewhat empowered because to some degree, I think a lot of us are feeling like a little bit helpless. It's out of it's control. Just, yeah. It is. It's just happening around us. So you're right. Being prepared. What do we mean by that? We've been told by the authorities, be ready in case you can't leave your house, you're quarantined or store shut down. Be prepared in your home for two to four weeks. The most important advice there, I think, is make sure you have a minimum 30, maybe even 90 day supply of prescription medication. That's going to be key. Mm. Beyond that, you want also want to make sure you have medications at home for the common over-the-counter complaints that a lot of sure. us sometimes get things like headaches if you get your know, Tylenol or Advil mm -hmm. you know cough medicine if you have bowel issues diarrhea medicine those kind of things keep those okay. on hand because you may not be able to run out and get them you also want to make sure you have if you have high blood pressure a blood pressure cuff so you can monitor at home you may not be able to go to the fire station and get your blood pressure mm -hmm. checked if you have diabetes a glucose monitor things like that think think a little bit ahead about what you might need and you may not be able to run out and I think that'll keep people empowered and safe if they're in their homes. All right important to reiterate 80% of people have mild symptoms but we must be prepared. Absolutely. Thank you Dr. Reddy appreciate it. With schools closing and communities canceling events parents might be wondering how to explain what's going on to your children. Here's Jennifer Bellamy who spoke with a professional counselor for advice on having that conversation.
It's a challenge for parents with kids of all ages, finding the right words to say. I spoke with Eddie Reese, a licensed professional counselor. He says the number one rule is to listen to your child first. Every child is different and age plays a role in this. So hearing what they have to say will help you see where they are. You might start by asking, what have you heard about this? That will give you a chance to address any misinformation or calm any fears they might have. Reese also says you don't want to share too much and as parents or other trusted adults, it's your job to understand how you're processing everything yourself before speaking to your kids. Check your own uh, feelings and thoughts about it before you go talk to your children. If you feel terrified and you go, oh, I've got to talk to my kids about it, they're going to pick up that you're terrified. So if they're not, they're going to then be terrified. Reese also suggests asking additional questions throughout that conversation to see how your child is processing what you're saying and make sure that you speak to them in their own language on their own level. We have put the latest coronavirus updates in one place to make them easy to find and to understand. You can look for the article in the coronavirus section of the 11 Alive app. A Georgia animal rescue is at the center of a multi-state investigation that triggered the surrender of 70 animals. Investigators now they want to know where money donated to care for these dogs went. Reveal investigator Rebecca Lindstrom traveled to Florida to confront those involved. A brown terrier mix was certainly in need of rescue after being hit by a car in South Georgia. He had bilateral femur fractures, a fractured pelvis, a ruptured bladder. The animal rescue Dragon Paws rushed to his aid, asking for donations to pay for his care. The dog, later named Highway, was a social media hit. On the mend, Highway went to a medical foster in Florida to finish his recovery. But instead of a clean home with specialized care, this is what Leah Moore found when she walked on property with sheriff's deputies. There were 50 some odd dogs in cages stacked upon one another and their own urine and feces in every room of that house. The same house where they slept? In fact. The Union County Sheriff in Florida called Guardians of Rescue to seize the dogs on this property in early February amid concerns of animal cruelty and neglect. Moore says vet records show Highway's bladder was fixed, but six months later, there is no evidence Dragon Paws ever treated his leg. Literal dead weight. It looks like Highway started to chew it off, and he wasn't the only dog with special needs left in the care of Sandra Abels. We don't want to talk to anybody about anything going on. The reveal traveled to Florida to ask Sandra Abels and her husband about the dogs. Have, have you been taking care of the dogs? Can we ask you to please leave? All right. What was their justification for not getting them help? They were just the fosters and not the people who manage the finances that allow for them to go get veterinarian care and have it paid for. Dragon Paws. It is a nonprofit with a presence in three states, Virginia, Georgia, and Florida. Terry Nicole is listed as president, but the Georgia license is held by his wife, Denise. The sheriff's office questioned Denise Nicole for more than two hours about what she knew and why she kept giving the Abels more dogs. We had the same questions. We just know there was a lot of money raised, a lot of questions about I am where working that money with law went. enforcement for the animals. Highways vet bills alone could run about $2,000. That injured leg now gone. Based off what you have seen, do you feel like a crime was committed? Are there criminal charges here? There's no doubt in my mind. No doubt at all. All right, you follow the recommendations of your employer, your doctor, all of the experts, and still you cannot get tested for coronavirus. Why, some patients with symptoms say they are not being tested. And we're watching some of those showers and storms that are to the north and to the west of us. Uh, stay with us. We're going to show you the new model data coming in and let you know whether or not they'll hold together once they make it into Georgia. Coming up, games tournaments have been canceled, suspended, but the value of sport remains. We'll talk about that coming up. Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points.
An Atlanta icon, ever-changing, always interesting. The Crog Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pretty eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel this good vibe. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about that hate. We just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're going to get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. It they does. are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient. Fun. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel like thing. we have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a yeah. new way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. What's the best part about Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together we come alive, amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together we are unstoppable. Together we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they didn't yeah. wait the next week. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. Only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Where are the tests? The federal government says millions of coronavirus tests are available in Georgia. More are coming next week, but we are hearing from those people with symptoms who say they cannot get tested. And we are dedicating an entire team of investigative journalists to this issue as part of our commitment, helping with facts, not fear. 11 Alive's chief investigator is Brendan Keefe. He shows us why people who meet the criteria say they cannot get tested. So I call my doctor this morning and it starts this two and a half hour runaround. And the conclusion I have is no one has tests. Cheryl doesn't want us to use her last name, but she does want us to find out why she can't get a coronavirus test. <coughs> I'm sorry. They told me to call the health department. We talked with Cheryl by FaceTime because she says she has COVID-19 symptoms, including a fever, dry cough, and trouble breathing. She's also in two high-risk groups, over 60, with a compromised immune system. Oh. Hopefully I don't have it, but I don't know. If I do have it, I don't want to infect all these people, but with a, no way to get a test, how do you know? Call your doctor's office if you believe 
you may have the novel coronavirus. Within hours of that statement, call logs confirm Cheryl called her general practitioner's office, which she says gave her a coronavirus hotline for the hospital physicians group. She says the hotline told her they don't have any tests yet. Cheryl called her county and state health departments, which she says referred her to the CDC in Atlanta. She says the CDC insisted only her general practitioner could order a coronavirus test, so she called back. The doctor's office recommended she call her employer. After two and a half hours on the phone, still no test. It's a vicious cycle. Call here, call here, call here, call here. Everybody's referring you around. I'm calling to see how I could get tested for COVID-19. We called some of the same numbers and got the same answer, no testing. When we look at COVID-19, it's gone around the world in about two months. University of Georgia infectious disease expert, Dr. Jose Cordero says we should be testing people like Cheryl. And she's already self-quarantined because of a suspected case at work. Is that someone you would want to see tested? Well, if we take uh, the recommendations and the current recommendations of CDC, she would qualify for, for testing. Coronavirus is now spreading in communities in the U.S., leading the CDC to allow doctors to order tests based on symptoms alone. But the physicians group hotline we and Cheryl called is still asking about foreign travel as a prerequisite for testing. Testing they say they're not yet set up to do. And the first question out of everybody's mouth is, have you been exposed to someone that's had a positive test? Well, that's craziness because they don't have tests available. The United States now is an affected country. The system where you put it out there in the public and a physician asks for it and you get it. The okay. idea of anybody getting it easily the way people in other countries are doing it, we're not set up for that. Do I think we should be? Yes, but we're not. Nations like South Korea are testing tens of thousands of people every day. In two months, the CDC and state health departments are reporting testing only 11,078 samples. That is a failing. And a that, failing, yes. It, it is a failing. I mean, let's admit it. Dry weather out there tonight, although we have clouds around and we're tracking a few showers that are back into Alabama. So some of these are going to be approaching northwest Georgia in just a little while and a better coverage of rain coming in in the overnight hours. And that's all ahead of this main system that is causing severe weather to our north and also to the west. We have two tornado watches in effect for parts of northern Tennessee and also one uh, in Kentucky. And then out just outside of that, there's actually a tornado warning there along 75 north of uh, really near the London area right there at the Tennessee and Kentucky border. Also a severe thunderstorm warning and then another tornado watch back into Arkansas. Now a lot of this moisture is headed our way, but we're not really concerned about a severe weather threat. The part of the system that we're going to watch moving our way is over into Alabama where we have some rain. I want you to notice here. Watch how we had a lot of thunder and lightning coming over the line from uh, parts of Mississippi into western Alabama right there at the line. And then as it moves this way, a lot of the lightning falls apart. So we're going to continue to see that weakening trend as this moves into Georgia during the overnight hours, but it's still going to bring us some showers, but we're not worried about a severe weather threat here. Temperatures, even though they've been holding in the 70s for much of the evening hours, we've just moved down into the 60s at 69 degrees. We still have lower 70s though in Rome and in Dalton. It's going to be a mild night. Now, as we jump into the weekend, I want you to know Saturday is still not going to be perfect, but it's going to be the best day of the weekend with a mixture of sunshine and clouds, only a 20% chance for a shower, high temperatures near 71. And then on Sunday, the rain chance comes back. We'll have about a 60% chance for showers and high temperatures up to about 68 degrees. But even with that higher rain chance on Sunday, it's not going to be a total washout. There will be some dry hours at times. Here's a look at that moisture coming in overnight and into the morning. You can see the showers at seven o'clock in North Georgia and in West Georgia. That's going to be moving our way, but as it moves to the east and a little bit to the south, we'll see a lot of that rain falling apart. So by lunchtime, a lot of the rain is going to be over. And then by afternoon, really low rain chances on the south side. Mostly cloudy skies here, but 
we'll have a lot of hours of dry weather for the afternoon. And then on Saturday, it's not going to be, as I mentioned, a perfect day, but only a 20% chance for a shower. I really think most of us will get through the day Saturday with no rain and even some holes in those clouds to let some sunshine come through. And then on Sunday, that rain chance goes back up. So we go from 40% Friday to 20% Saturday, back up to 60% on Sunday, and then down to 40% Monday, back to 60% again on Tuesday. So you see how those rain chances are going to be up and down, as well as the temperatures. We're starting at 71 Friday, upper 60s Saturday and Sunday, then down to the upper 50s Monday, and then warming back up to the mid 60s Tuesday and lower 70s by Wednesday and Thursday, when we'll see those rain chances for the middle of next week at about 30 to 40%. In case you missed this last night, it might have been Vince Carter's last shot as an NBA player. Really cool moment. Everyone inside State Farm Arena went crazy, knowing that might have been Vince's final NBA moment. Carter said afterward, if last night was his final game, it's all good. If it ended today, you know, and, you know, this day, this, this end of the season, these last 16 games will be talked about for a very long time. And that's something I'll always remember, you know, at least I scored my last basket and uh, it'd be a, a weird but cool memory. It's been the most surreal 24 hours of sports I've ever seen. The entire sports world has been turned upside down because of the coronavirus. The NBA, Major League Baseball, NHL and Major League Soccer have all suspended their seasons. March Madness has been canceled. There won't be a Frozen Four, no College World Series. And as of right now, NASCAR is having its next two races, including the races this weekend at Atlanta Motor Speedway without fans. And the PGA Tour just announced a few minutes ago they have canceled the Players' Championship in all events through the Texas Open. The Masters is the week after the Texas Open. Still no word from Augusta National on that event. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm sad. I love sports. But what's going on in the world right now is serious, and suspending play is the right thing to do. If giving up sports for a little while will help get the virus spread under control, then I'm all for it and you should be too. No game or tournament is worth potentially spreading this virus. So no live sports for a while. You could watch some movies, could read a book, or you could hear me out, hear me out now. You could spend some time with your family. I know it's a novel concept, but we'll continue to have sports segments on this station. I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't really know what that's going to look like, but we're gonna have it. And we will dedicate that time to continue to show the power of sports. It's a power that becomes even more apparent when times are tough and things seem uncertain. But even without games, there's still plenty to talk about. Like, where's Brady going to land? Where, where are the Braves' World Series caliber roster? Can the Atlanta United continue to play well without Joseph Martinez? I mean, the list goes on. Do, or who should the Falcons draft? Stuff like that. It seems insignificant right now, but sports will go on here. And sports around the world will eventually return. But for now, let's help out one another. And let's be smart. Let's be safe. And wash your hands. We'll be right back. Oh, wait, now we got one more thing. One final note, leagues closing their doors affects uh, obviously our entertainment, but it also affects a lot of hardworking people that work inside the arenas. Dallas Mavericks owner Mark Cuban quickly said last night that he's going to come up with a plan to make sure that his employees at American Airlines Center are taken care of. And tonight, Hawks owner Tony Ressler followed Cuban's lead. He, too, will implement a program to make sure State Farm Arena employees are compensated for the games they would be working if the season were to continue. It's pretty cool. Now we'll be right back. All fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once in Olympic City, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. Newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt?
Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foyne Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, and Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Auntie. No. <laughs> Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boil Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you just do what I say. I'm gonna do. No, no, Lumen ain't faded. You could have super. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. We're going to see uh, the rain chances going up overnight and really toward tomorrow morning, and then they'll taper off in the afternoon. Highs near 71. Saturday looks like a pretty good day. We're going to have more clouds than sun, only a 20% chance for a shower. I really think most of us will get through the day Saturday with no rain at all. And then Sunday, the rain chances come back to 60%. They're up and down next week to 40% Monday, 60% again on Tuesday, and then back to 30 to 40% on Wednesday and Thursday. Temperatures also kind of up and down. We're in the lower 70s Friday, upper 60s Saturday and Sunday, upper 50s Monday, so a little cooler before it warms up again for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. All right, Chris, that's about it. Nothing else to say, really. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It hadn't been a busy day at all. No. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> 11alive.com, all of the information you need to know about coronavirus. And, of course, we have you covered right here. Thanks for watching. Have a great night. See you tomorrow. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Oh, uh, okay. yeah. right, right. about I mean, that. Well, reward would be... Slimming, Slimming down. Okay. Yes. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah, a little water yes. in my cup. And, and beautiful skin. Well, you know, well, even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not going to be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Some mornings what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foyne Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Lil' Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever-changing, always interesting. The Crog Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel as good vibe when you vibe with
with it. It's a good time. We don't worry about the hate. We just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're going to get here. And that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscast 9.